Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Not Tuesday Show. I guess this is uh, 1v1 is what I'm calling it temporarily. And uh, basically, I'm just bringing on a uh, guest and we're just going to chit chat for however long we feel like chit chatting. And today I brought in Mr. Arturo Sanchez. Uh, you there, Art? Yeah, I'm here. How are you doing? Yeah, you know, like I, I love the intro. I love the intro. Yeah, you're so esports now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> hey, I was just saying we're not esports, man. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're still trying oh, yeah. to pay for. Oh, and like, and, and like, uh, I chose that specific picture for for a good reason. So the no, the reason why I chose that picture was because um, so 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 I was the first person to show injustice once in the world since I was QA at another realm. Oh, yeah. So gotcha, me, me, gotcha. me, me, me and uh, me and uh, Nerd Josh, and like, and, like I was having a <laughs> me, Nerd Josh, Chris G, um, Pig of the Hut, Crazy uh, Rio, Check. Like, I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody. Um, band the Testers, w w w w Wonder Wonder Chef, yeah, Band the Testers. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, like I, I was having a conversation with the NRS cats on Twitter last week, and um, they were like, some of the new guys were like, why don't you play NRS? And I'm like. Like I, I did play NRS, just not MK11. You know, like I, I played uh, MK9, played uh, M, like they brought me in for Injustice One and uh, Mortal Kombat X. So that's why I chose the picture. Shout out to another realm. Uh, I love Ed Boon. Dude, nice, nice. Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on here are obviously you're old school like I am, and there's a lot of yeah. old school stuff. To, in fact, I yeah, might I'm not even. 40, um, I'm turning 40 in two months, a month and a half. You're still a baby, man. You're still a still baby. Still a baby. Still a baby. <laughs> I mean, I'm new old. I'm, not, I'm new old school. I yeah. Because like, because there were a couple of because if you divvy up old school, it's a couple of generations of old school. Mm -hmm. I'm probably like I mean, the second or third generation of old school of, of uh, old school. I mean, we'll like get the last, there for sure. Yeah. We'll talk about some Eddie Lee in 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 when we get a chance here, but um, you know. Uh, the one thing that, you know, I want to because I know we've had a lot of conversations just, you know, at events and stuff where we talk about FGC and, you know, what yeah. we're doing, et cetera, et cetera. And I tried to mob you at Combo Breaker on purpose. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then you blow me up with your dulcim. You're like, here, see how the lag is. And then I never can escape block stun. And then I'm like, yeah, this is. A <laughs> I, thought, I thought you'd be the type of player. I thought you'd be the type of player to feel it with just jabs. <laughs> Actually, got me, got me, got me, because you're a combo wizard, so it's like yeah, but I I, I, yeah. I'm muscle memory guy. I I remember I almost ruined Evo East that one year. So I remember that year. <laughs> I remember I, I remember that year loud and clear. Oh um, man! But but but, but, like, but it was interesting. Like when Kudo got on the setup, he could feel mm -hmm. it right away with jabs, and then Dang, he was landing. Uh, he, he, he was landing 12 to 13 frame confirms in training mode with a uh, random guard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I yeah, hate people with reactions, man. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't no, have he doesn't. reactions. But, but, but like, but, but like he was just playing on PS4, right? So like, I, I saw him, you know, he was playing some casuals, right? And then he was playing a bookie and he was dropping everything, right? And I was like, yo, kudo, <laughs> let me, let me show you the real shit, right? Come, come, come to the back. <laughs> oh man. Cause you remember, yeah, I still could barely confirm on 16 frames, dude. Oh yeah. Man. Yeah. Yeah. 16, frames. yeah. 16 frames. But if you drop, if you up the refresh rate, you know, you can, uh, yeah. You can do as low as 13, 13, 12, <laughs> maybe 12. Oh, man. But, I mean, uh, look, this is the thing, right? This is the reason why I wanted to bring you on here. I don't think people are aware of how much you have done for the fighting game community. Like, you know, know, when, when I... Know. When I say like you're one of the most important people in the FGC because of what you're trying to do to advance the scene and do new and different things, like I don't think people realize like all the like a lot how much you've had your fingers in a lot of, you know, technical things and, you know, even organizational things like Matcherino, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but I mean, yeah, that, 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 thank you for giving me the. Um... What, what, what was the award that you, that you had on your show? What was it? it was oh, the award. content. Yeah, the content creator of the year, I think it was. Yeah. Or FGC member of the year. It might I think have it been. was. Yeah. Yeah. It was Ultra Chen FGC member of the year. Yeah. I'll still wait. I'm not. I'll still waiting for my Canon award, though. I want that. I'm like, I'm, <laughs> I've been thirsty for that for like Dude, 20 years. The Canon award is gone, man. The Canon award yeah. weirdly became too political because everyone was like, I it should get month, one. Yeah. I should get. And it was like, it is, whoa. Very, it is very, it is very political. You're right. <laughs> Dude, it was crazy because like I created the Canon Award. That was literally my idea because I wanted to give highlight to the Canons because like there was for the first qualifier for 
SBO for Street Fighter 4. Tom Cannon flew down just to hang out, and me and him teamed up. So we were the team, okay. right? Just for fun. I mean, we had no intention of winning, but like someone saw me and was like, oh, hey, James Chan. I'm like, oh, yeah, by the way, this is Tom Cannon. And the guy looked at Tom and was like, hey, what do you do in the FGC? And I was like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, the uh, I, I created the Canon Awards so that we could award people, you know, starting with the Canon so people could be aware of who they were and then award people yeah. who, you know, contributed. Yeah. And then it just became political because everybody yeah. wanted a Canon yeah, uh, Award. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, everybody wanted a Canon Award. Now, yeah, I saw the Canon's like combo breaker. They're like the, like one of the second guys I saw. It was nice oh, to see Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, they were there. Yeah. I definitely saw, I think I saw Tony that was there briefly, so... Yeah, but you know what it is with the brothers. Everybody gets them mixed up. Dude, I'm I, after all this time, I still can't do it. <laughs> I have to listen to them talk for a while, and then yeah. I can figure out which one is which. Uh, yeah, pretty much. It was easier back in the uh, Bang the Machine days when one of them had their hair dyed, right? So, <laughs> bro, like, that movie's got to, bro. That movie's got to come out, man. We could figure out a way. We just need to kickstart uh, like, it. Hundred thousand dollars in music rights. So. <laughs> just freaking, just, just freaking, like I don't, I don't know, just do over the music. I, but it wouldn't be the same, obviously. Of course. I wonder if they could now, because there's a lot of technology that can pull voice away from music and stuff. I yeah, wonder if the exactly. technology exists that we can actually separate yeah. the dialogue from the music uh, now. You probably uh, uh, like. You probably can. And, and then also, you know, it's important to remember that. Um, you know, like a lot of people don't know this, you know, Bang the Machine has been shown at Evo mad times. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, during the whole 9-11 thing, you know, they lost a bunch of footage from the East Coast side of things. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, like the footage you see, the actual final version, it's missing like so much shit. Yeah. So for those people in the chat who don't know, they created an original cut of the movie to send around to film festivals. And the rest of their footage was stored in their office buildings in the Twin Towers. And then 9-11 happened, and yeah, all that footage yeah. is gone. And so Sucks, the yeah. only version they have is the one that they sent to the film festivals, which has licensed music, because at film festivals you're not making money, so you're allowed to do that. And so now if they wanted to actually put it out, they would have to pay the rights to all the, the, the licensed oh, music so, in there. So, 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 so was that, was that um, during ECC5 or ECC6? I, I that's couldn't not, tell that, you. That's, not, that, no, that's what I'm trying to remember. I think it's. I think it was ECC five. Oh man! Like I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm trying to remember too much stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this is this is the cool thing about it, right? And I think this is what kind of makes it unique. One of the things that I love talking that, that you know we talk to each other about. It's it's interesting because you know in this day and age, you know it's about content, it's about clout, it's about creating yourself, becoming a personality, and trying to. That you know, find your own individual success in, that's in the trying to tell the frauds. I was trying to tell the frauds 10 years ago. That, that, now they listen. Cause like, oh, <laughs> hey, yeah, right. now all of a sudden they start listening. So yeah. Like, you were one like, of the like, first, Patrick. you were one of the first on that, right? You were the first yeah, on doing TMZ, the first on that. TMZ yeah. interviews and yeah, <laughs> hidden TMZ camera interview. footage. Yeah, T TMZ interviews, hidden camera footage, um, oh, man. Off, off, off stream matches at tournaments. Yeah, uh, it kind of it, it kind of grinds my gears when uh when when now like uh the the new FTC that they, they be saying like oh like you know like why, why would I go to an offline tournament? I can just stay at home and stream online. And then like no like you can still make content at the tournament itself. Like get, right. get creative. I mean, get we creative. saw Hotashi. Yeah. Hotashi was live streaming like the entirety of Combo Breaker. I know, I know. Right? So he also tried to say he, he also tried to say that that he innovated that. No, like uh, we did that ten years ago across. The <laughs> like stupendous, <laughs> stupendous has been doing that for years as well, right? Yeah. So uh, we did no. that. We, we did that cross assault, bro. We had like ten k. <laughs> Cross assault, yeah, yeah. dude. That's a topic we can probably avoid for now, but <laughs> maybe in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll avoid it, but but just know that that Ultra David wore the Stay Salty shirt at yeah. Capcom Cup, and nobody fucking noticed. Yeah, except for the boomers. Yep, nobody the man noticed. salty shirt. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, no. Okay, so the one thing I want to talk about, the one thing I want to make sure that I talk about here, and this is like I said, this is the conversation that we have personally. You know, both of us are obviously still are old, and we've been doing this in the fighting game community for a long time. But I'm the thing. Young. 
How about you? <laughs> yeah, young art, young art. You play very uh, young. That's what it is, man. Dude, yeah. I tell you, on that monitor, I could never throw art in Street Fighter Five. It pissed me off. I got really mad. So, it was so like, yeah. So, so, so the reason for that, the, the reason for that is, is because like you, you can see the keyframes. Uh, you can see the keyframes because the monitor is drawing faster. That's the actual reason. So, so like, so, so, so because, so because you can see the keyframes, it's like subconsciously no, yes. your uh, subconsciously your brain processes more information like uh subconsciously you don't even know you're doing it but uh it's easier to take a throw it's easier to see when they're shimmying you uh, obviously it's like you can't guess right all the time but still dude the, like the uh, uh, not that, yet. yeah that's why was, you had to see that's why i bought it you, you have to see it for yourself you can't hear me say it yeah i was kind of mad about yeah. that anyway, <laughs> but look the thing is you've put in a lot of work right whether it is NLBC, you know, the big two, you were the, one of the ones that, you know, first started streaming a lot of these things. You were one of the early adopters for Match Arena. You're really big into this, you know, display lag, this kind of input lag kind of thing. Um, you know, and when we meet up and we talk about this, you know, there's really very little kind of like personal glory for us in this kind of situation, right? For yeah, I'm not, yeah, 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 I'm not, I'm not doing it for the glory. Yeah, if I did it for the glory, I would have not said anything about display lag and I would have just stayed smoking people. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit was I smoking people. Like, <laughs> bro, oh, like, bro, 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 like once I figured it out and I asked people smarter than me if everything that I confirmed was right and it was true, bro, like, now, uh, like, I guess you can't imagine this, but imagine playing in net play and you have a four frame, you have a four frame advantage over everybody. That's me. <laughs> that was me. Yeah. Jesus. That was me. And, and, and you know, it, it's crazy because, you know, when you think about it, when you think about it, like, one of the things that we talk about is that we've been doing this for a very, very long time. And because we're in an era where a lot of people are doing things for personal glory, it's like it's very easy to misconstrue what a lot of people are doing. But what a lot of people don't understand is we've been in the scene for, God, like, what, yeah. 20 years now, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We've, we've kind of lived through the grassroots. And when people are like, I would be fine with the FGC state grassroots, I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, no. Like I'm, I'm not fine with that at all. But, but, but yeah. Like, uh, but yeah, like I was saying, like I was going for the glory. Like, um, I would have kept it to myself. But, but right. no, I actually want, like, I actually want the FGC to advance and evolve. And I want people, I, I want people to know what uh, optimal play feels like. Like, mm -hmm. I could probably say, like, um, if, if you've been playing, probably within the last ten years, you know, like you probably started on flat screen. You, you, you don't know, what, you don't know what no lag feels like. Right. Straight up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you actually don't know. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And, and it, it's interesting, you know, so for us, you know, you are also, you know, one of the champions of promoting every game, right? So you, yeah, you know, I, you're, I love everything. Yeah, you're doing GBVS, you're doing, you know, help, uh, when, when Yipes was doing, but, you know, Battle of the Best or, uh, what, what Battle of the Strongest. It? Yeah, Battle of the Battle. Strongest. You stepped in and were like, let me show you, I can stream this in perfect, like, uh, non scaled, perfect, oh, yeah, yeah. replicated pixel well, fidelity. That, you know, that was, yeah, that, that was actually, uh, so, so Retro RGB, that the homie, um, he uh, introduced me to Dan, which was 3000 PSI. And, um, you know, basically, like, we met up at a super secret retro Illuminati meetup and became friends. <laughs> what? And I told and, and I told Citrus 3000 about, about what I was doing with uh, Marvel and stuff. And he was like, yo, like, I'm coming out with, like, DC HDMI. It's, it's going to change. He basically gave me seven DC HDMIs. Eight. Eight DC HDMIs. Just, he just sponsored the event. He just sponsored the event, like, straight up. <laughs> and then, and so, so, like, that, that was a good move, though. That shit blew up. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, again, like, what is your motivation for this, right? Like, what what drives you to keep doing this for the fighting game community? What, oh, what, what you do it what specifically? What's that? Oh, just everything. You know, the match arena, the 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 you know try. You 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 oh, said so, so, that you're. So, 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 so start one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. So, so, so I can go through it. So you okay. see, you said match arena, right? So. So, Macharino, you know, we've been grassroots. Like, we know what it's like to play for shitty pots. <laughs> we know what it's like. We, we know what it's like to wait net 90 or net never. Right? Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. that's why I did it. I was like, I'm sick of these pods being trash. I'm, I'm going to do something about it. Right. Like, and, and, and then, like, if I don't see in other regions, I just take matters in my own hands. Like, uh, eventually, <laughs> well, um, eventually, people will start noticing. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. And, I was, and, I was, and, and Vic, again, Vic was gone. Vic was gone, too. Vic was gone. He was in the Philippines. He was out. 
That's no. right. That's right. You I were doing control. this. Dude. That's right. Mm. I had control of the whole team's Buki channel. So by the time Vic came back, he's like, "Yo, what the fuck is this?" Like, What's <laughs> and I was like, "Bro, like, I, I'm giving you back the reins. Like, yo, like, blow it up." And he's like, "Damn, it's kind of god. Like, you mean you, you you mean like we don't have to put in our own pop bonuses? You mean we can actually monetize the stream in a way that benefits the players? Holy shit!" <laughs> And, and right, so you know when you're doing the match area things, it's it's benefiting the players, right? It's definitely benefiting the 100%. players more than it's benefiting benefiting 100%. you guys. So I mean, as a whole, you even said it like you want the community to know what it feels like to play on lagless setups. You want to solve the pot problem for the players, etc. So, yeah, I'm so sick you know, of it. Yeah. That kind of is what I'm what I'm referring to here. You're obviously have your finger in like 80,000 pies, but all of it is to try to make the scene better, right? To 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 make the FTC a lot stronger and yeah, I yeah. guess what's the motivation for that, right? I mean, you know, for example, if I talk about why I do commentary and all these things like that, um, it's just because I want to help spread the gospel of the fighting game community. I want more people to enjoy it. I want everybody to know how talented a player like IDOM is, how talented a player like Tokido is, because people see fighting games and they assume that you're just mashing buttons if you don't know how to play fighting games, you know? And so I want to spread the, 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 the love of fighting games as far as possible. That's kind of like one of my my uh one of my uh uh ulterior motives like for you what is it that you know what's your i guess quote ulterior motive for always trying to do better things for the fighting game community okay because like because i know what it was like back back when it was shit and i'm tired <laughs> of it being shit and like if i don't do something about it like if, if not me then who who the fuck's gonna do it man like <laughs> Like I'm not. I mean, if I'm in a position where, where I can actually change shit for the better, like of course I'm gonna try to change shit. Like, uh, it's it, it's that simple. It's like it's like I know how hard we've been struggling for for, for, for so long, and then and like I said, when the NLBC thing started, it was perfect because um, so like the whole matrimonial thing started because like you know like Spooky was out, I took over NLBC, but you know I didn't have any sense of direction, right? Like mm -hmm. it's like I was taking over Vic show and and not making it my own show, right? Mm -hmm. Then um, Yipes and Chung come up to me and they're like, "Yo, like uh, they're like, yeah, we're trying to do commentary at uh, NLBC. Can you break me off some bread?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure. You know, I'll break you off some bread to uh, come commentate at uh, NLBC." Mm -hmm. And like, I was I was around the time when uh, Matcharino came around and like uh, I think I started using it for a couple events, right? And then like I blew it up real quick, right? Like I, like I when I started using it, I think it was like an East Coast Throwdown. With uh, Daigo and stuff, or like uh, like I think he was selling his book to Maturino. Oh, that's right. like ten thousand. Right. like ten thousand dollars, something like that. That was before I started. Where I was before I started working for them, and then um the NLBC stuff happened. Yipes and Chung, I was blowing it up with NLBC, but then it, it turned out that I was doing so good at crowdfunding, they just wanted to hire me like straight up. And like and and, and at first and at first I was just like you and like everybody else in the FTC. I'm super skeptical about mm -hmm. new companies coming in the space and then just flashing a ton of money and then bouncing. <laughs> dude i mean people aren't aware how many times that has happened in our community right just people yeah. showing up and then flashing money and disappearing on us in fact most of our biggest events almost happened because of that right like we wouldn't even have had ceo if that one guy didn't you know basically oh yeah uh, no, oh yeah my manny camacho game uh, <laughs> yo, i have all the i have all the files bro like do you even remember I, his I name dude it. <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, it's, man. Yeah, it's supposed to be Empire Arcadia versus Japan, and like it never happened. <laughs> right. And, and, you know, we've had a lot of that stuff happen in our community. And so, yeah, I remember when you first started pitching Match Reno, I had the same thought. I was like, this, this is too yeah. good to be true. Like, this can't possibly come on, happen. Like, come on. Come on. Like, if, if Young Art pushes something, it, it's it's legit. You know this right now, man. Come oh, on, is man. that how it works, huh? Yeah, like, how, how, many times, how many times you got to doubt me, right? <laughs> And the best part, the, the, no, the best part is to actually get a salary to feed the players. So like, it makes it even better. Wait, what do you mean? Like, what do you mean exactly? I mean, it, 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 because I'm on Matcharino paid staff, so I was uh -huh. getting a salary from Matcharino to basically crowdfund the shit out of the players. Dang. Okay. So okay. So, so, so so like so so like it, it doesn't get any better than that, man. Like, <laughs> you, you, mean basically... paid, you, you mean I get paid to to give Idom two k a week? 
<laughs> freaking Idaho, 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 dude. Uh, so yeah. uh, for those people who don't know, and every time I say this number, it never sounds like it's real to me because it just doesn't feel real to me. But since you started doing Match Arena between Team Spooky Channel and your own channel, you've the prize monies that. that you've given out has almost been like half a million dollars, right? I'm, pull, I'm pulling up the stats right, right now. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm actually on the page. Um, so yeah, my analytics is loading. Give me a sec. So, so like, so, so these event analytics are actually like um below what what they should be. Mm -hmm. So like, it's actually a little bit higher. Like we have to, we we, we have to aggregate our data better. But uh, right now, my page says four hundred fifty nine thousand one hundred twenty four. Prize pool average three hundred fifty five dollars and thirty six cents. Unique contrib contributors twenty thousand six hundred sixty eight. Eleven thousand dollars in uh, sponsor quests. Fifty-one thousand sponsor quests completed. Dang. Right. Twelve hundred and fifty-four finalized events. Now, mind you, th this is between myself, Vic, IFC Yipes, a couple other guys, and this is not. This is only my account. You know, like I've helped yeah, other yeah. Mm -hmm. many other accounts. So if if you if you combine all those accounts, it's probably close to a million at this point. Like you know, like I, I haven't tallied, but like I'm pretty sure it's at least seven hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, you know, like Jazzy Circuit was like seven thousand five hundred, and like right. that was my account. And and all of that too. I mean, that's actual money that's gotten into the players' hands, right? This is like none of this six to eight weeks wait for the check kind of thing. Like this just goes to them immediately, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well yeah, like it it does, it does go to them immediately as long as as long as you have the info, you know. Like uh, so so so, so if you're a Matcherino, if you're a player in a Matcherino event. And you're, it, you would, it would help the TO very greatly if you give them your match reno <laughs> info as soon as the event ends. As soon right. as the guy stops streaming, give him your info. Or just sign in and click join tournament. Because it saves people a lot of time. Like, uh, so, like some people are delayed. And um, the reason for the delay is it's is, is just like, like we don't have like one of the players' names. Or, yeah, know, of course, of course. Stuff. I so, mean, sometimes. So, so, now, so now, that, now that's the new problem. We, 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 used to, we used to expect net 30. Now people expect net 1. <laughs> oh you know? right you mean in yeah, terms of was, when they get buddy. paid right yeah yeah they expect that one i spoiled <laughs> them too much i spoiled them too much james oh man but i mean it's interesting because a lot of people i mean people have asked me questions like what was the fgc like back in street fighter two days and you know there was no fgc right there was literally nothing was I, was just reading, I, I, I was reading about it in game fan and uh, game pro mm. i saw mike watson in game pro and i was like wow that's pretty cool who are these guys, right? <laughs> oh. Mike Watson and Game Pro, Jesus. I, I mean, yeah, Schaefer, Tomo, it, like, I mean, you already know. Yeah, I mean, people don't know how, I mean, like, honestly, poverty it was a long time ago, and how how different it is now, right? And, and that's that's one of the the interesting things is like we're succeeding, we're growing, we're becoming something bigger, but obviously, I feel like it needs to 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 even get bigger because i mean again that's where my selfishness comes from it's just that i think that's, fighting yeah. games are awesome and they're i want awesome. more people to appreciate them <laughs> that's another reason how like that no, that's another reason why i push pc high refresh yeah you know, like I, I'm, 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 I'm like you know I'm, I'm trying to i'm trying to get those pc sponsors man right so but here's another question though i mean you know obviously we just saw the the, the tweet come out from the evo staff they say that they're trying I'm to glad they thank me I'm so glad they thanked me. By the way. I feel so I feel so validated. I feel so fucking validated, bro. You know, no. uh, yo, you you don't understand how how many arguments I've had to have with like people that just don't get it, bro. Like it just, dude, I didn't get it. Like, there's no way. You didn't get it either. You know, no, it didn't it, make any no, sense. No, to no, me. no like, it's how, cool. It's cool. It's how cool. does like, game? It's cool you didn't get it. How does a game that outputs in 60 frames per second benefit from having 240 oh, yeah. so, frames hertz? So like, you know, it doesn't so make I'll, sense. I'll but explain to you. So I'll explain to you. It's, it's like I mean, now that you play it on, you understand. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so like, uh, all right, sit down, guys. <laughs> all right. So, 60 hertz monitor, right? Game runs at 60 frames a second, right? Each each frame on a 60 hertz monitor is 16.6 milliseconds, right? Bear with me, right? 60 hertz monitor, 16.66 milliseconds, right? You go to 144, it drops to about 8 milliseconds per frame. So, okay. like, do, 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 so do, do you get it now? Like, basically, like, as you go up and refresh, the draw time cuts in half, even on a 60 hertz game. Right. But, yeah, I mean... So, 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 like, so it's not that the lag is dropping. 
the perceived lag is dropping from the monitor. So it's drawing faster. So that's how you can see the keyframes and stuff. Does that make sense? So basically, on a 60 frame monitor, sometimes it could hertz, draw the hertz, frame. Hertz. So it hurts. On a yeah. 60 hertz monitor, it could draw the frame earlier, but it doesn't because it's only refreshing 60 so, so, hertz. So, 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 like, uh, so with a console, so a console, you, we, we all know that consoles have VSync, right? You, do, yeah. you know what VSync does? James, you, uh, you know it, how, it, how, it prevents how, it prevents the screen tearing, right? That's what yes, VSync yes. does, right? Yes, but but it also draws the frame at the last possible second. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. It, it, it draws the frame at the last possible second. That, that's why everybody recommends you turn VSync off. If you turn VSync off, you get the tear in sixty hertz, but the monitor is drawing as fast as it, as it can draw it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. once you up the hertz. Like you were saying about seeing the keyframes of the throw, even though the game animates at 60 frames per second, the, the time that it wants to draw the next frame could have been maybe yeah, a few it. microseconds yeah. earlier. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, basically the TLDR of it is, like I said, 60, 60 hertz, 16.66, 144 hertz is 8, it's 8 milliseconds, 2, 240 hertz is 4, right? <laughs> like... Uh, no, I think 360 hertz is two, and 480 hertz is one ms. Yeah, <laughs> one ms. So it's like basically lagless. I mean, the the one of the things that I tested out when I went over there was um, when I tried the machine is you let me play some Marvel three, and there's that one Doctor Doom combo oh, that I can oh, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to do, and it usually takes me a bunch of tries to get it. And I missed it the first time I tried it, but then I got it on my second, third, and fourth attempt, which was oh yeah, crazy. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, the, uh, uh, oh yeah. The, the, so I, I had you play those games in specific order for a reason. So, mm -hmm. so like, uh, so like, uh, I'll break it down for you. So, uh, so we went over the sixty, we went over the sixty hertz stuff, sixty FPS running on a high refresh monitor, the, the lag drops, right? So, so like, uh, so you can drop it even further if the frame rate matches the refresh. So, Marvel Three is one twenty FPS and one twenty hertz. So not only do you get the dropped lag from the monitor, you get the improved motion, which drops the lag even further. Remember, what, what, when frame rate matches refresh, the, the input latency drops overall. Dude. So, so like that, that's, that's why you're able to land those combos. Dude. And then uh, Tekken, <laughs> Tekken is even further because that uncapped frame rate is 390. We were playing at 390 FPS, 390 hertz. So the lag drops even further than that. Dude, the craziest Crazy. thing about it is, is like the amount of knowledge that you absorb. So this is true story. Uh, Art and I met up at, um, it was like older David and I were flown out to something in Atlantic city for a tournament out there. And I was trying to buy a super gun and I asked Arturo about super guns and oh my, I thought it was going to be I like, Oh, lecture. buy <laughs> this super lecture. gun. No, dude, it turned into like this hour long conversation of like, this is okay. If you want a super gun, you got to do this and here's this. And this. dude, like yeah, the amount of knowledge um, that you have put into your head for all this technical stuff is kind of insanity, dude. <laughs> Cause, yeah, Cause there's those that bitch and there's those that do. Well, which side of history are you on James? Yo. Damn. <laughs> Yo. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely on the side that bitches, dude. Nah, I mean, you've all nah, you seen do, you my do. YouTube videos, you right? You do. <laughs> no, nah, 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 like, nah, nah, you, you bitch, but you do. So it's all good. <laughs> Yo, know, the, you know, the, you know, another thing that um, there's another thing that I wanted to mention about high refresh, which I actually think the FGC does not realize, right? Like mm -hmm. um, so, so like uh, so so obviously we just covered the whole refresh thing, right? Um, so it, it's really interesting. So. In my opinion, I feel like no, obviously we know now that high refresh is a different game, like full stop, like mm -hmm. PC, PS4, totally different game because of the three, four frame differences. So, in my opinion, like uh, when you have a totally optimized setup, because these games are developed in 60 hertz, like you know, from the developer itself, mm -hmm. like it, it actually breaks the risk reward when you go to high refresh. Because think about it, like, uh, like uh, obviously you have an optimal setup. You have an optimal setup. You can block things that are considered unreactable mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in 60 hertz, right? So, so like, so, so the risk reward of the whole game totally changes <laughs> be, 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 because these games are developed with 60 hertz in mind. Right? Yeah, they're designed yeah. with the with the with the 60 frames per second in mind. Frame data is all in 60 frames per second, right? So all yeah. of it is designed in that kind of uh, idea. Now, yeah, um, so, so, yeah, I'm, yeah. So basically, like with Dawson, for example, my 12 frame anvil becomes eight frames. In 480 hertz, effectively, effectively, what? How eight does, frames. What? 
so, see, like that's the part that like blows up my mind. Like I like that doesn't make any sense. Like the move is not faster. No, it's just that you can. not faster. I'm dropping the lag. I'm, I'm dropping the lag on the controller. I'm dropping the lag on the graphics card settings, and I'm dropping the lag on the monitor. So in other words, you it's like all, on a on a normal setup. It's basically there's an extra eight frames that get added by input lag, by display lag, oh, by refresh so, lag. So, 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 like, so, so I'll, I'll break it down for you, right, actually. So let, let's take PS4, for example. Like mm -hmm. uh, I said this on a retro RGB show. So Street Fighter Five, right? It's like four and a half frames on PS4 or whatever, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So, like, so there's that. Then the controller latency. So if you have DualShock 4, it, uh, it lags on 10 ms. We're gonna round it up to sixteen, so that's that's five and a half frames, right? Mm -hmm. Um, then um, then the monitor, right? So so sixty hertz monitors, like um, a good tournament standard, is around ten ms for a sixty hertz monitor. That's why I don't get why the players cry like about monitors. Like the monitors don't fucking lag, guys. Like it's sixty hertz, ten ms, right? <laughs> so, 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 so yeah, so but uh, but uh, that that's another frame. Then there's V Sync on the console. That's another frame. So like we're getting close to seven eight frames on console guys, right? Versus one versus one on PC, right? And so the idea, what you're saying is that you know if you your button is eight frames faster, it just means that when you press the button based on what you see, it's in response. Yeah, it'll response. come out faster because you're yeah. seeing stuff faster. You're all, I mean, talk about overclocking the controller too, right? Because you yeah, do that uh, as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, not, yeah, like I do overclock the controller and it saves anywhere from half a frame to like one and a half frames depending depending on your PCB. So like that's something that that's something I want to see Sony do. Like so I know Evo made the announcement and like that's good. Like um for, 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 for what I heard from the grapevine, apparently allegedly, allegedly, right? Like it, it's going to PS4 Pro and PS5 are going to drop the two frame delay, which is great in 60 hertz. Now the the you know, the only problem is after that we need to get PS4 and PS5 to overclock the USB ports to a right. 1000 hertz. So, so we so, can drop the delay even further. So just so people understand what we mean by overclocking the controller, the way that controllers work on any system is that the machine pulls the controller for its state. So it's pulling the controller to see what buttons are being held down. And if the state has changed, it knows to trigger that button. So if the previous state yeah. it pulled it, it, the button was up. And the next time it pulls it, the button is down. That means the button was pressed. Do the button press. This is how all consoles, PCs, etc. work. Yes, but yes. the pulling rate is obviously yeah. by standard, what is it, 60 frames per second? Is that what it is? So, 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 so the pulling rate, so DualShock 4, unfortunately, it pulls at... um. 250 hertz a second. Okay. So like, uh, so, so like, so it, it la so it's 10 ms delay. The sad mm -hmm. thing is, Bluetooth has a higher polling rate than, than wired, so it actually has less delay on Bluetooth. <laughs> okay. And so when yeah, you overclock, yeah. when you overclock the controller, what you're basically is doing is making the machine pull your controller more frequently rate. and so it can detect the change of the state even just a few frames even maybe one yeah. frame faster right yeah and when you are uh, yeah, yeah yeah when you overclock a, a dual shock 4 it goes from 10 ms to 2.8 ms that's a big fucking difference and people, yeah. players can feel half a frame pl pl yeah. players can definitely heal people half a frame M m matter of fact the reason why hotashi is cooking y'all is because he uh, he's so freaking smart he's playing on a dual sense 5 the lowest latency first party controller, mind you, right, right now. It's like okay. one point, it's like 1.8 MS, right? He's playing on a dual sense five on PS4. And guess what their opponents are playing on? They're all playing on dual shock four. So that means <laughs> plus one frame of lag offline every time. The so what Hotashi's like blowing, blowing y'all up. <laughs> He's now, smart. Here's the question though. Here's I mean, I think you even said this on Twitter yourself. If Evo works with these guys, and let's say they do improve it so that we can raise the you know polling rate of the controllers yeah we can... i'm fine with i'm, I'm fine with uh two frame 60 hertz by the way like i think that i think that's a phenomenal score just to give right. you an idea just to give you an idea of retro games they're two point they're 2.6 frames so I'm, I'm fine i'm fine with two frame 60 hertz i think that's a great compromise they just need to increase the polling rate on, yeah, the, on, and, the, on the console itself and if they can do that and also fix the display lag and, you know, fix the Unreal Engine to fix the input lag and all that stuff like that, like, you're cool, right? At that point in time, we can so, just all play on yeah. consoles. Yeah. We're, yeah, yeah. Gra we're yeah, great yeah. and, like, get some good yeah, refresh why. monitors and, like, yeah, everything that's why is I support wonderful. It. Yeah. 
That's yeah. why I supported. That's why I supported the movement. Like I, I said, like you know, basically, it's not that that I want to play on PC. It's more so like a, I want the lowest common denominator to actually mm-hmm. rise. So, so like so the fact that you know Sony and Evo are working to do something on console. That's really good. Like uh, it, it puts a path forward. And you know, I'm not trying to be exclusive and say PC Master Race. Like you know, if the lowest common denominator <laughs> of, of consoles is fixed, then like uh, that's good for everybody. And uh, going forward. You know, like uh, with, with, with PS5, you know, if the, the the path that they're going, you know, what 120 hertz refresh rate, that's great for tournaments. That's right. great. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I know I play on 480 and everything, but no, like what 120, 120 hertz is the biggest jump on um on delay. Because like I said, as I said, it drops in half. What what world are we living in? Are that a player like Hotashi could go to Combo Breaker and lose and be like, "Yo, see me online." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah, yeah, because yeah, because uh, Guilty Gear Strive. The, yeah, like I, I remember, like um, I was telling the Guilty Gear players, like um, you know how to optimize the setup because that was when I started doing it around then. Um, Guilty Gear, Guilty Gear Strive, and optimal setup is sub one frame. It's really? sub one frame. That, that, that shit, that shit feels mad good, James. I, I, I haven't played, I haven't played Strive in, in like six months, but yeah, like that shit feels great. That shit feels great. <laughs> That's just, I mean, it, it's crazy. I mean, yeah, your goal is not necessarily like to promote the PC, but when you're doing all the things like coming up with the Brooks adapters options to, you know, fix uh, all the, you know, the, the controller, controller compatibility yeah. problems and stuff, you're just trying to solve a problem. But if the problem is inherently solved, you're like, we're good. Like, let's go. And y- you can do it basically, right? Uh, yeah, let's go. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, by the way, like uh, due to capture card limitations, the uh, max refresh you can do in an offline tournament is 240 hertz. Mm. Be, be, because of, be, because of uh, HDMI 2.0 limitations, HDMI uh. 2.0 bottleneck is 1080p 240 hertz. Until HDMI 2.1 capture cards come out, we can't play 500 hertz like at scale or whatever, mm. right? So, <laughs> so, so yeah, but but, but 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 if you notice, if you notice, Japan plays on 240 hertz. <laughs> they play on 240 hertz offline. I'm not. I'm not gonna name names, but you could definitely see the the cult of Arturo in the chat from certain people. <laughs> yeah, everybody's yeah, yeah, everybody's getting everybody's getting woke. Uh, yeah, I love it, James. Yeah, everybody's finally getting woke. You know how long it took me to wake people up? <laughs> I mean, again, I, that's like one of the most amazing things, too, because, I mean, that was the same thing with, uh, you know, with Macharino and stuff. And and even I mean, I tell I people up there, too. <laughs> yeah, I tell a lot of people this story, but you remember what it was like when Evo switched over from arcade cabinets to console. Oh, the shit. It was a shit show. Yeah, we were all we were all triggered. We we're all triggered. You're like, yo, like. Like how, like how dare you? How dare Evo? Like Dude. you know, basically like change the competitive standard. You know, consoles are subpar or whatever. Rawr. Dude, we were so that. mad, and yeah, and it was literally like this event won't even count. Like it's got to have an asterisk because consoles garbage. You know, and like yeah. console in every way, shape, or form is like better than arcade. You know. Now, we yeah. know that nowadays, but like these are like a lot of the str- like. It's interesting because. Old school FGC very often gets accused of being a little bit too married to the old ways, right? Not, well, like, uh, so, so, like, so, I think that's not true, actually. But uh, you right. can't go on. No, that that's my point, right? Like, a lot of them are married to the old ways. One of the reasons why, like, I wanted to bring Vi on here is because I have this conversation with Vi a lot too. He's always like, "Yeah, no, we have to change it up. We have to do stuff different. Like, it doesn't work the way it used to. Like, that's what you're doing a lot of the times. I know I get stuck in a lot of old things, but like, I understand that we have to change as well, and we have to keep growing. I mean, that's what we're about, right? We're about adapting. <laughs> that's like the fighting game community. Yeah. We're we're about adapting. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Yeah, yeah, that, that's why I push for um for for undamped controllers on, on arcade cabinets. That's why I push for things like a uh, Mr. FPGA. Mm-hmm. That's why I push for things like a uh, CPS this. HDMI. All right, like this is so many things to talk about. Dude, so okay, you you brought it up. I'm gonna change topics very very uh, slightly here. Uh, hang on a second. Let me do this. Uh, preservation is what I want to talk about. So. Gaming preservation is a big topic. Now, when we had Oric on the Tuesday show, we talked about it. He brought up oh, yeah, the concept it. of the home. Yeah. Yeah. I love you, Lawson. <laughs> I like. I, I gotta get my monitor shit from from his garage. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, like I, I like Eddie I'm just sitting there. Oh my god. Uh, I mean, that's I the whole that. thing. 
like video game preservation when the 25th anniversary street fighter collection came out i was super hyped for it because it was going to keep all the bugs and it was going to have that preservation obviously there are issues with it yeah, and it's you know, not like and, and it's unfortunate like they, they don't keep the source code for these things man right like and, yeah dreamcast st was like the last time they had the source <laughs> You know, well, yeah, HDR. Know. Remember, Serlin had the yeah, source. Dude. Yeah. Oh, G-Cast. that's right. He was using the Dreamcast yeah. one. That's right. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, everybody used the Dreamcast after the Dreamcast. I think the Dreamcast version had the source code, the, um, yeah. the CPS2 mm-hmm, source code, mm-hmm. but then they lost it after, after the Dreamcast <sighs> version. Jesus. Yeah. So what a lot of people don't realize is Japan, you know, back then storage was not something easy, right? You didn't have terabytes and teraflops and whatever of, so like, literally, yeah, literally like Silent Hill 2, the reason why the remaster of that is so bad is because when the game finished selling, they deleted everything. All the original voice acting is gone. All the original textures are gone. That's right, why right. the Silent Hill 2 remake is not very good. That's why when the Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 didn't sell as well because they released it less than a year after Vanilla, like they were like, oh, okay, it's not successful. Dismantle the whole thing. And that's why they couldn't update it anymore. You know, like the history is just of yeah, them. Bro destroying things and not only that but not even just for fighting games for video games in general is one of the most impossible things to preserve with like films and music we just keep transferring it to the new media that doesn't work yeah. in video games so, yeah no yeah no it doesn't work and like one of the reasons why the one of the reasons why mr fpga is so godlike and we've been trying to we've been trying to tell like the yeah, nyc vfs in the chat like you already know so we've been trying to tell people <laughs> what it is with uh, mr for, for a hot minute so, so look, the, the reason why they're so godlike is certain. So tell, cores, tell people what tell people what Mister is. I don't think people even know what right. it is. All right, so so basically, Mister FPGA, it, it, it's a uh, it's basically FPGA, the uh, D10 Nano. It has like it has like a bunch of accessories that you can put on that you can put on with it, and uh, basically, basically, it, it represents close to a uh, cycle a- accurate rep- emulation of the uh, hardware. But it's so, a simulation. It's at the hardware level, not the right. software level. So this yeah. is the best way to explain it is this way. FPGA, so my one of my best friends literally works in FPGAs. Like he yeah. works, he's like really important at a at one of the biggest FPGA companies out there. And he explained it to me one time and I didn't dude, it's so hard to understand. But essentially yeah, you're able to program hardware, right? Yeah, so to, 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 to do whatever you want. Right. So what happens is that people can go and find the original hardware of games and instead of emulating something to work for everything like a a MAME does, you literally emulate the actual hardware Hardware. itself. So when you run the software, the software doesn't even know it's not running on virtual hardware which is how they found out yeah. Billy Mitchell cheated in that one Donkey oh, Kong yeah, yeah, video yeah. because yeah, the, 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 the drawing rate, the drawing rate of MAME. <laughs> right, because the, the, on MAME, it drew in a certain order, but on the actual hardware, the, the stage frame by frame drew in a different order. Oh, and yeah, so, of course. <laughs> and so, yeah, <laughs> Mister, what it is is it's that's what it is. It's a box that allows you to load up all the different hardware emulation. Yeah. And so, 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 CPS one and CPS two obviously is yeah. one of the main ones that's happening, yeah. right? But the, but that but that's because so like I said, so not all cores are created equal, and it's up to the emulator. It's up to the FPGA author, I should say. Like Mister is not necessarily Black Magic. The reason why CPS one cps2 and neo geo are so fucking good is because the core authors actually took time to decap yep. the board yep. and that is not easy that that is months of work go, go look at widd like the guy that runs input lag that science yeah like, like, basically like the, the god he basically decapped the whole cps1 yeah he decapped the whole shit like it's, it's interesting because of, of course it's gonna be godlike you know, uh, you know my roommate Olaf. He's obsessed with uh, S and K stuff. He has the Hyper Neo Geo. I, I forgot what the board is. It's the one that plays 
you know, 11, KOF 11 in 2002. Yeah, the atomic. Yeah, and, you know, he has, he wants to get a Hyper Neo 64. But that's the thing is you have to find somebody who has access to the Hyper Neo 64 hardware and the interest to spend months to emulate that hardware yeah, so man, that yeah. you can play a total of three games. <laughs> so, so like, so the, this is why this is why I always say like, when, when people hit me up on Twitter, they're like, "Man, like, I can't wait! I can't wait for Third Strike to be a Mister." And I was like, well, "Why are you wishing? Just sub to Joe Tago's Patreon. Give him those three bucks. He's decapping the shit for you. It's gonna be godlike. Like, yeah, like put your money where your put your money where your mouth is. Like, <laughs> like I'm open, right? Don't he just bitch, do." <laughs> That shit is three dollars. That shit is three dollars, bro. Like, you know how much CPS threes are these days? They're like twelve hundred. Like Dude, they're expensive, right? yeah. Uh, they're fucking expensive. <laughs> and and but that's kind of what Mister is doing. I mean, it's not even just important for the fighting game community, but it's important everything, for everything. the entire video game industry because this is the first yes. time we've been able to kind of preserve and act act. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, accurately. Reproduce yes, yes. these uh, games. Yes. So, so like, so it, it's like a. I would say the simulation is like a ninety nine point eight percent right now. Like, right. and when I say that, and then, and when I say that, top players will, will not tell the difference. There may be edge cases, certain glitches and stuff, and things that are not common that could be different, but we don't know mm-hmm. yet, right? So, 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 so anyway, like, I think it's ninety nine point eight. I think if you put a Mister in a cabinet and you have top players play on it, they can't tell. Yeah, and then when you yeah. tell them, the same thing always happens. The, the, the placebo effect hits them and they're like, all oh, the timing is different, right? Dude. And they play on it for another hour and they're like, oh shit, like I, I was wrong, it's just placebo. Dude, <laughs> one of my favorite stories was uh, at Evo, there was the one year, I forgot what game it was, but everybody was complaining about the laggy monitor, right? They were like, oh my God, this la- monitor is so laggy, this monitor is so laggy. And so Tom's like, fine, I'll swap the monitor. So he took the monitor down and he put up the monitor and had them play it. And they were all like, yeah, this is much better. This is much better. And Tom was like, it's the same monitor. Now shut up. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, yeah. It's, it's definitely, like I said, it's definitely placebo with, with a lot of these cats. But um, but, but yeah, like a couple of reasons why Mister so got like you know, like we said, the decapping of the chips. Like Mister, like a, a D10 Nano complete kit is like five hundred, six hundred dollars, and like that, that might sound like a lot, but uh, think about what you're getting for, like for the value, right? You know, you get mm-hmm. you, you get CPS one, CPS two, like you know, tons of arcade cores, tons of computer cores, even right, and. It's it's like put it like this, right? You 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 can go balls to the wall like myself and Cruz and actually have a CPS one, CPS two, CPS three, HDMI boards. Those are fucking expensive. Yeah. Mister Mister, it has dual output, 1440p analog, 1440p digital and analog um <laughs> CRT out, and it has an and it has a script for um USB polling to 1000 hertz. So like you know that shit is not lagging, right? Definitely that shit is not lagging. That's why I say that's why I say Mister is gonna be played in the biggest retro competitions eventually. It's only a matter of time. And yeah, like Oryx says, for a fraction of the price too, right? And you don't have because that's the thing is that hardware out there is limited. No one is making a brand new CPS three board. The number of CPS three boards that are out in the world right now is a finite number and will never increase. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's probably, yeah, 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 yeah. It's probably like it's probably like uh, five digits at, at most, right? Uh, like on the CPS3s. But but uh, but that being said, you know, as godlike as Mister is, I'm not selling my original boards. Oh, of course, of course, yeah, said, yeah, of yeah. Course. That, that being said, and like and Mister's the shit. Mrs. is the shit, yeah. but I'm not gonna sell, I'm not gonna sell my multis. Right, and, and you know <laughs> it's crazy because I mean, from your perspective, you in particular, I'm talking Arturo Sanchez here. Like, I call myself a fighting game historian, and I'm kind of a fraud in in a lot of ways because. I haven't played a lot of like the random ass games out there, right? You've played like everything and you run events for like everything. And so like you have like a a vested interest, like a personal kind of like love and appreciation for a lot of these old fighting games that people aren't even aware of exist, right? Yo, like, yo, I love it because, you know, we're just doing it up. We're just doing it up with the homie crews at a, Man, like men, and like like next level, you know, two hundred two furious, I fix machine, like we, we were just blowing up all the retro games, right? And like that mm-hmm. was the period where nobody gave a fuck, right? So, but but like we're just doing our thing. 
we just blowing up the retro games and then blowing up Matcherino. And then fast forward like three years. Now all of a sudden everybody's like, oh, retro's sick. Retro's lit. <laughs> right? I'm, I mean, like, I'm like, where were you frauds? Right? You know, I'm trying to tell you the whole time. I mean, look at look at how popular a lot of these retro games are on Fightcade, right? Yo, there's a lot Third Strike, of... almost a thousand, Third Strike almost has a thousand people on Fightcade. That's crazy. Wait, Third Strike has like a thousand people? Be- really? Yeah, like uh, that, that, was a, that was a screenshot by like Polar Bear that showed like 890 something. So that's pretty close. Dude, that's sick, dude. And yeah, I mean, again, you know, fighting game preservation. I mean, I really appreciate what, you know, the guys at Digital Eclipse have done, you know, with like the Street Fighter stuff and the Mega Man collections because they kind of try to do it in a different way in which they built a virtual hardware for the games to sit in. And so when you port it to new consoles and platforms, you only had to change the uh, the outside layer. You only had to port the hardware and all the games would work the same way. But again, that's a lot of work and you got to keep doing it every single time. But the way Mr. Works is you do it the one time. Now, obviously, very hard to do. But if someone builds like a perfect NES rep, you know, emulator, a perfect N64 emulator, then all the ROMs will just basically mostly work, work right? Obviously, yeah, there's going to be... Was I'm that? saying that I like it. Yeah, I agree with you. Like they'll mostly just work. And, and like I'm saying this now, stream. I see a future. I see a future where third strike tournaments are on Mister. Young R said it mm-hmm. here first. Like, mm-hmm. like it, it, it's gonna happen. Like whether the third strike community wants wants to or not. Dude, I mean, those, I'm doing the same. Boards, boards. Dude, and that's the thing, right? Like, I'm kind of doing. Obviously, I don't have the 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 history historical roots in the classic Tetris scene, but like, there, that's another scene that I feel like you know they've got to oh, start yeah. moving on to other hardware because NES is in Tetris, NES Tetris cards, and Nintendo pads are limited, right? They're gonna run out. Yeah. So I mean, you know, I, 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 I mean, you could probably you could probably use like one of the cricks um probably use like one of the crix cards to add extra mappers maybe because like right. I, I know some of the flash cards they um they have additional nes mappers that are um that were not possible on um original hardware mm-hmm, like uh mm-hmm. i saw I, I saw one of them doing um full motion video on nes which is kind of crazy yeah via, and, via, via custom mapper <laughs> yeah i mean as a person like who literally grew up with video games I'm, I'm not saying that i grew up playing video games i grew up when video games started and i watched them so i was in the arcade when Gal- galaxian and pac-man and tempest yeah, all and all that stuff and i the fondness that i have for these games and to see what mister is doing to be able to preserve this history it, of video games blowing it up is 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 like it makes me emotional like i get like literally right now i feel emotional because like it makes me happy that these things will be preserved in a way that they deserve to be preserved it will be you have a mr james yeah, yeah, Mr. Yeah, I do not have one. I talked to uh, what is it, Pork Chop Express, and at one oh, point, yeah, that's he, the homie. I'll take yeah, care of you. At one point in time, he said he was gonna try to get me one, but I just didn't follow through with it because I just I feel I feel bad. I don't want to be that guy, you know. Like I don't oh, care. Oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't care you, if I'm James not, Chen, less, you know. Like people are like you're James less, Chen, you less. deserve it, but like no, I don't, you know. Like <laughs> I just want to I just want to throw it out there, you know. Even though Young Art gets the shit early, Young Art also pays for his hardware. Yes. Young art don't get young art don't get no freebies, right? When when I <laughs> when I Back. talked to you about the super gun stuff, the amount of money you were telling me you had spent on super gun hardware and equipment was crazy. I don't even know where you got the money for all that stuff, dude. Like it's it's it. insane. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 mean like, not, I mean I've been streaming like like twelve years now. Right. God, I w- <laughs> dude, I can't do it. Streaming is hard, dude. Streaming. I don't know how you play online. Dude, that's actually another topic I want to talk about. We could go All completely right. to a different topic if you if unless you have anything else you want to say about this preservation here. Oh yeah, so so, so like I said, with Mr. basically, you know, just support the project. Remember like Mr. is not a Mr. Cabal, you know, everybody all the different authors are doing their own thing. Make sure to sub to all their patrons if you can, because these are all independent guys, you know, just trying to blow it up for the scene, you know, like uh, m- much respect to the Mr. And, and the whole Mr. Crew, like uh, making retro gaming more accessible for uh, everybody. That being said, you know, it's still a tinkerer's hardware, you know, it's still kind of like DIY, you know, it, it's not mm-hmm. like um, it's not like it's user friendly. I still like the analog. Right. But right, the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, the value for the value you get for it is better than anything else. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, 
that's kind of one of the important things to mention too, is that there's nothing corporate about Mr. There's, no, it's, no. Like, it's literally no. just a bunch of people. And you know, it's scary because if it blows up, there's a potential for people to start making it corporate. And, you know, that's kind of where the fighting game community is in the first place. You know, before the streams, before, you know, uh, you, 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 we got on this call, I was talking to people in the chat about like how hard it is for the FGC because we won't, you know, we want to make sure all of our events, we play every game and we don't want to have one governing body, you know, one governing company like Capcom sponsors CEO, because, you know, we, we appreciate all the different things and it's hard because if corporations do take over Mr. and stuff like that, it could definitely go the wrong way. In my opinion, it's not going ha- to happen though. It's too open source. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, so, I mean, look, uh, jumping to another topic here, because I definitely want to ask you about this. Look, I'm going to just say this straight up. OK, I'm I'm a washed up player. Like I can't play fighting games worth anything. That's, anymore. That, 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 that's only because you haven't optimized your setup. I'm telling you, man, yeah, I'm telling you James, trust like, me, like, it has nothing to do with the optimized setup. Art. Trust uh, me. Uh, <laughs> now, 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 you say that. Yo, I, I literally thought I was getting too old, right? I'm like, damn, like, I can't move anymore. I can't react. I must be getting old. Then, then I do all this <laughs> optimization shit, and I'm like, holy shit, it's not that I'm too old. The game's fucking lag. But it doesn't matter, because even before you got the optimized setup, this is my question. How are you doing all of this stuff and still being a player, even before optimized setup, you were still winning some NLBCs, placing top four, placing top three. How do you have find the time to stay so, stay such a strong player oh, while uh, doing uh, all was, this other stuff? Oh, with Street Fighter Five, um, I can say with Street Fighter Five and stuff, like uh, like it, it, it's no secret. I actually put the time in. Like uh, like if, if you saw me during the pandemic, I was actually playing the game for like eight to ten hours a day. Jesus I was playing for eight to ten hours a day. Like, like I mean, I'm not talented like some of these new bucks. Like, they can <laughs> pick up a game and be good in like five minutes. It it, it takes me longer. <laughs> I gotta figure shit out. But but yeah, like uh, I actually put the time in. You know, like I, I research. I use the technology available to me these days. You know, there's some great stuff with like um frame SF trap Sim. tool assistant. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I, yeah. SFV sim frame trap tool assistant. There's all these things you can do to like actually like level up your game. Like you know, even watching replays. Slowing it down frame by frame, you know, like Street Fighter Five is a very numbers-driven game. It's not. It, it, it's very. It's very static. Like it, it's very static. Um, for good or for, for good or for bad, mm-hmm, you basically mm-hmm. have to know the numbers, right? So right. So like, uh, so, so now like uh, with SF Five, it's on a sixth season. So like, so so basically, you get knowledge checked the fuck out, right? Like if somebody <laughs> took like a break for like three to four months, you can tell right away. You can tell right away. <laughs> it's like a knowledge check game. So, right. so like, I, I've basically been playing the whole time. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, I mean, even you were saying that you don't feel like you're one of those innately talented players that is just good at the game is basically. No, I'm not. I, I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm not but like, I'm, I'm smarter than a lot of these cats. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. like, cause I mean, I tell them, I, I literally tell them what I'm doing. I'm like, guys. So with the whole refresh rate thing, people would, some, some people's first reaction is like, it's cheating. Right. And I'm like, course, no, it's yeah. not cheating. And I'm like, no, it's not cheating. Like, you still have to guess. Here's exactly what I'm doing. This is how you do it. Please copy me so we can play on a, on an equal right. equal standing ground. I don't want to be having this advantage because like you're too fraudulent to actually research. <laughs> Dude, it's like it's like Arxis, right? They have this technology where they have this beautiful graphics for Guilty Gear. They've had GDC talks and like articles on how you could replicate it, and nobody's replicating it. <laughs> Oh man, no, bro. It's like, bro. Like, it's like Idom said. Like, Idom when he played on my setup, mm-hmm. he says, "If you never played an art setup before, you haven't played a fighting game." Period. <laughs> really? Dang. Um, yeah, re- really. Yeah, re- really. Go, go look it up. Uh, it's on Twitter. Uh, I think I retweeted <laughs> a couple of times. Four, four fills. Four fills from the UK. Yes. I optimized his setup the week before. The week before his CPT qualifier, guess oh, who oh, wins? Hey, hey, uh, uh, yeah, I was about to ask. Uh, remind me who won that CPT event? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was uh, it, it, it was man's like it was man's like four fills, and and I sat there on Team Viewer with him for an hour and a half to optimize his rig, and then That's he sat so there great. in training mode, and I was watching it on remote. 
And he was like, damn, damn, this feels kind of godlike. Wow, thanks, Art. <laughs> Like, wow. And then he won CPT, and what does he, what does he say in the interview? He's like, shout out to my man, Arturo. He changed the game for me. He's crazy, dude. <laughs> but uh, By the way, the, uh, no, the first people I told about the high refresh was the Dalson players, because like, I wanted them to fuck everybody over. Man, I will still but, never yeah. I will still never not give you guys crap for saying Dalson was dead that one season. It was all know? part uh, you know, it, it was all part of the Illuminati plan. Like, you know, downplay <laughs> Dalson a little bit. Oh and then he gets and, 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 and then he gets buffed. Oh no! Oh yeah! By the way, by the way, I read Red Bull Kumite, like the one that uh, Mr. Crimson one. Right. Who, who do you think was Who do you think was consulted for for the actual like stream setups in terms of lag? Your boy right here. <laughs> I wasn't even fucking there. See, now, now you admit it. You guys were downplaying Dalsum just to get him buffed. You admit it finally, huh? <laughs> yeah. When I, saw, when, when, when I saw Red Bull Kumite, and I saw like that, and I saw like the 144 hertz because the V Sync tier was on the stream. That's how I knew shit was not lagging. And then when I saw those patch notes, and then I saw those patch notes for Sim, like, random before Red Bull Kumite, they're like, whoa, Dalsim VT1 burns from farther away. I'm like, are you fucking serious? <laughs> <laughs> like the best buff you could have ever given her. I mean, obviously, you're still really good at Street Fighter V. I mean, people are saying that, you know, we've all been watching you cook people offline at NLBC for years. I've been cooking people for like 20 years. I've been cooking people for like 20 years, bro. Are you playing (laughs) anything else right now? Are you playing any other fighting games seriously or just casually? No, no. So, so, so like, so so I believe that because the FGC evolved, it's so hard to play multiple games now. (laughs) Because when, when we first started, bro, like, we just go to arcade and win every fucking tournament. Right. Like, 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 the skill level is that low. Like now these days, it's like I strongly believe you have to pick one game and stick with it because it's Dude, too Tokido hard. Tokido like. only plays one game now. Tokido only yeah. plays one game dude it's ridiculous and i mean it's one of the reasons why i i joke that i'm washed up but honestly i'm playing kof and guilty gear and street fighter 5 and soul caliber 6 when dnf duel comes out and now i might be playing vampire savior on cfc dude it's impossible to get good at anything <laughs> oh yeah 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 i know everybody's everybody's so fucking good but yeah like i, I have been playing sf5 pretty much exclusively because like i want to stay in that top tier like right. you want to play it yeah, so like, obviously, uh, like I a lot of time. obviously you're gonna stay very competitive in Street Fighter Six, right? You're you're probably gonna yeah, I'm stick... in there. Yeah, okay. But I, I just want to know. I'm not, I just want to know if if the game is gonna be 120 FPS or not. That's all I want to know. <laughs> all I want. <laughs> oh man. Uh, well, let me let me let me delve into kind of a different topic here too. Not just talking about you staying strong and stuff like that, but you know, obviously you were very strong a long time ago. People don't know you were one of the best in MVC one. You know, obviously MVC two, you were very strong. You were strong back in the alpha and all that stuff like that. So let's do this. I I really want to talk about this because I feel like this is a topic that doesn't get talked about enough. This name, you know who I'm talking about, needs more publicity and people need to know. The name Eddie Lee needs to be on people's minds legend, more often when we when we talk about legend. Yeah, when we talk about Rushmores and Hall of Fames and stuff like that. This is a name that a lot of people don't talk about a lot. Obviously, you know, it made for great drama. He got kind of done dirty by the the Bang the Machine documentary, but it happened. Uh, Whatever, it happened. But his influence on the New York scene is still felt today. I said that on Twitter, and I saw you agree with that, right? So Everybody everybody in the East Coast comes from Eddie Lee's left nut, and you don't even realize it. You don't even realize it. So Uh, talk to to me about Eddie Lee a little bit. When Do you know what game he started with? Was he playing original Street Fighter 2? And when did you meet him, and and, and, and like how did you start playing with him? Because if people don't know, Justin Wong, Arturo Sanchez are two players that are direct descendants of Eddie Lee. Justin's turtle style came from Eddie Lee. When we didn't have the national tournaments, Vae dominated West Coast, Eddie Lee dominated East Coast, and if you watch any CVS2 matches, everyone from West Coast used N-Groove, Kyo, or doing doing run, low jab, run, low jab, run, low jab, because that's how Vae played. Everybody on the East Coast played Vega and Mai and like turtled the hell out of everybody because that's what Eddie Lee did. So Justin's turtle style came from from Eddie Lee, right? And so yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Eddie Lee's our Eddie Lee's our daddy, man. Like, uh, <laughs> I'm not, so like, so I first played him in um, so like I first played him in a uh, Flushing, right? I, I played him in Flushing. So the, oh. like, uh, Flushing is um, is a uh, Chinatown in uh, Queens, right? And uh, mm-hmm. you know all the Chinatowns back then, like they all had arcades and stuff, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think oh. I first played him. I think I first played him in like uh, X Men versus Street Fighter or something like that, right? Jesus, okay. And then uh. And, uh, and, and like, that was around the time where X-Men was Street Fighter, Street Fighter 3, New Generation were around. So I started, I was playing him in those games. And uh, I, I remember at the time, I'm like, I'm playing this guy, and I'm like, bro, how the fuck is he fucking winning by running away? How is he winning by <laughs> running the clock down? Like, he hits me once and just run? What the fuck is that? <laughs> so... <laughs> Oh, and then, uh, and then, and then, when the flushing arcades closed, um, I, I played Eddie Lee at Playland, and um, b- basically, like he was the guy that always had the hundred streak, in like right. Marvel or like wh- wh- whatever, whatever game you touch, right? He was pretty much a god, right? Um, so fast forward, Playland, Playland arcade closed in uh, Times Square, Broadway. Uh, we, we all migrated to Chinatown Fair then. Right. This is, this is like around Second Impact time, and uh, that's when uh, Henry Sen was involved, and uh. Basically, basically, like we all became friends. Um, Henry, myself, Eddie Lee, um, Flash Gordon, rest in peace, oh, rest in yeah. peace, Flash G. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like we we all started, we all started hanging out and uh, like just actually like being friends. Like, uh, I was considered the um, annoying loudmouth scrub in, in, in the whole crew. <laughs> so, like, I was the youngest. I was the youngest out of all of them. Right? They're, they're like, oh, you're free. You're free. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, but 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 yeah, like uh, but yeah, after after that, after the whole Chinatown Fair thing, that was when I first started finding out about tournaments. We went to uh, ECC three, um, Chinatown Chinatown Fair started having some tournaments of their own, um, and then and then from there we really started collabing and started leveling up. Um, mm. one of the reasons why I was so good at Marvel vs. Capcom one at the time, um, so J- so Jason Wilson's tournament, um, at Super Just Games, uh, Midwest Championships, right? <laughs> yes, that was uh-huh. that, that was that was one of the tournaments where uh, East Coast and West Coast would clash, right? Yes, like, it was in the middle. It was on Arcade Hardware, you know. Shout out to Jason Wilson. I, I saw my KIT um last year. Oh, like, nice, that's nice. Awesome. That's another person. That, that's another person like we, that, that needs to be interviewed. Like people, yeah. people, don't, people don't know the contributions that guys like Jason Wilson brought to the scene. Dude, he was the uh, first guy to really put FTC stuff into the magazines, into Tips and Tricks magazines regularly. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. So, 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 so anyway, so um, so Midwest Championships, right? Like basically, myself, Eddie Lee, and Henry won all the fucking shit, right? Like that, that was before <laughs> West Coast. Came, right? That was like two thousand or something mm-hmm. like that, right? Mm-hmm. Basically, won everything. So, I think like we walked we walked away with like a PS One, Mad Games, um. Uh, you yeah, guys um, probably um, got like a hundred dollars, right? <laughs> not, no, no, like, it, it was like a thousand dollars. Oh like, dang, dude! Game. You guys were, dude, you were balling, dude! A thousand dollars back, back then. <laughs> but, but, but like, but, but we still caught the Greyhound home, and the most important part of the things that we won was a Moss Super Gun. We actually oh. won a Moss Super Gun. So you know what happened? So, so like, so, so Eddie won it. We ended up going back to his house. Henry's like, "Yo, just keep this MVC one board." Right, and this is like '98, bro. Like, you can't get the arcade at home. Yeah. Right. And then, I mean, while we're just sitting there, you know, while we're just sitting there with a super gun, and it's like myself, Mike Devonish, Josh Wickfall, Liston, Rich Aponte, Eddie Lee. We just go to Eddie Lee's house every day and just crack out for like ten hours a day. That's oh how we got so good. God. Like I, I, I'm on the arcade PCB. So that that literally that MWC Midwest Championships was like life changing for you guys because yeah. and Henry and, and Henry. Hooking us up with the board, because yeah, because he took one of the Marvel One boards from our Chinatown Fair. He just That's left crazy. Wait, did Henry work at Chinatown Fair? Yeah, he was the manager. He was the manager. Oh, I didn't even realize he was a manager of Chinatown yeah. Fair back then. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. But dude, that's that's crazy, dude. And, and so like, I mean, but still, despite all that, Eddie Lee was always still the best, right? Out oh of yeah, everybody. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, Eddie Lee was considered the best. So to put it into perspective, it took me. Oh man, like it took me like two years to finally beat him in tournament, and like <laughs> two years of just getting bodied, right, running away, mad lane. Like, how am I gonna beat this guy? Like, I never beat this guy. I finally did it at ECC 4.5, and it's like I don't know what it's like. I, I don't know if you guys um can can relate to this, but the first time you actually overcome your demon, dude, after all the struggle of of getting bodied, like it feels so fucking good, dude. right? Like. I, I'm going to tell you the first time I actually beat Valle in CVS two, like in casuals, 
in ca- not even at a tournament, but in casuals the first, I still remember when I beat him and I felt like I was on top of the world, dude. I was I was on top of the oh, fucking yeah, yeah. world when I beat him. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah, no, no, yeah, exactly. To, to to give you like um a new world uh, a, 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 a example relevant to today, right? The, mm-hmm. the, the first time I finally beat Idon after getting bodied for like six months straight, <laughs> I was like, yes. Yes, I can do it. Like, <laughs> like was so, dude, like he was so good on like PS4, like um, Street Fighter Five, that I was just thinking, I was like, man, this guy is way too good. Like, I, I can't beat him. I can't beat him. And then like, figure something out. I was like, yeah. Well, wait, wait a second. I can beat him. I can. Beat- <laughs> well, so <laughs> let me ask you this: Now that you've given him the hardware, can you beat him, or does he not have yeah. the hardware yet? Uh, I'll like I'm, I told them what to do. It's just a question of will the players do it. I, I can only leave them so far, James. I can only leave them so far. What, what do you want from me, bro? Like, come on, you want me to fucking buy it and get, go to his house and get figure it for him? <laughs> now, now, okay. So obviously, Eddie is the best at the time. He's still washing everybody. Yeah, yeah, he's the best. Yeah, yeah, he's sure I mean, the best. Like, I mean, some, so like little extra stories about Eddie Lee. He came back for a short period of time to play MVC three, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He did, and a SF four, but like, yeah, but he wasn't around too long. Even though right. he was only he was only around for a relatively short period, his impact on the scene like uh, cannot cannot be understated. And I think the only reason why people don't know about him is because that was before like an internet video was right. really common. Because you linked the video that he beat Chris G in Mar- in Marvel three, right? Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, now, yeah, now yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but it's actually sad because now when you, when you see that version of Eddie Lee, he plays on pad. It's very sad. Whoa, it's very sad. Oh, Eddie Lee's yeah, become a sad. pad player. Oh my god, yeah. oh, dude, I'm like, I've I'm lost like, oh, respect for Ed. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Now here's here, here, like, do you still talk to him at all today? Like, or Henry? Does oh he yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we try to hit him up every now and then, but um, okay. he's largely disconnected from the sound. I think the last time I yeah, talked to him was when. Uh, the last time I talked to him was when um, Flash Pass. Just to let him know. Oh right. Okay. Okay. Now, I mean, is there any temptation to try to reach out to him and be like, "Yo, Street Fighter Six, time to get in there, son." <laughs> yeah, like, I, yeah, like I, I want him to get back in there because, like I said, with, with the way, so so with the way FGC is, we, we we don't know what the limits of human reaction are. I think it's right. fifty. I think it's 50, right? Like, I think 50 reflexes start slowing down. Wait, 50? Oh, clearly, oh, you're talking about the age. You're talking about the yeah. age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Clearly, because clearly, I'll tell, like, I'll, you can still body people in their 40s, right? I'll tell, you, I'll tell you four years from now, okay? <laughs> I'll tell you four years from now. Yeah, bro, uh, bro, bro, like, just look at the ST, just look at the ST players. It's doing Gee. short, short, super and ST, like, that's like the hardest game to do combos in. Like, yeah, yeah. they're like fifty, bro. Like, come on. <laughs> but I mean, obviously, like, so I mean, it would be awesome to get Eddie Lee to come back, right? Obviously, you know, real I love life. It. I would love it. And and our life, like, what's interesting too is that our generation of fighting game players, I I've talked about this a lot on my stream, but we kind of had that notion that we would eventually grow out of it, and it would be time to do real life. And, <laughs> and fighting games disappeared, but there was a few stubborn ones like yourself and me who were just absolutely, you know, like, I mean, honestly, in 2008, that Evo was almost my last Evo. I almost quit because the, the Street Fighter 4 beta didn't really speak to me. But then when Street Fighter 4 came out and it blew up, I was like, well, I can't leave now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah so, like when Street Fighter 4 came out, it was, it was revitalized. I, I remember right after that beta, Right after Evo, like I was in Japan for like three months, and like uh, I wrote like a hundred page. It's it's still in the SRK archive somewhere. Are you serious? It's like a hundred, yeah. like a hundred fifty page thread like, of just me just covering the Japanese scene, and like that was back when uh, YouTube first started uh popping off, right? So, so like I was able to get footage of Tokido Vortex and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, dude, I, that's I, when the vortexes know. were starting. Yep. Uh huh. I kind of remember you talking about those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no. Okay, so. Obviously, it would be great to get Eddie to come back, but talk to me about when did Justin show up and when did, like, he f- go went, go remember, from stupid, so well. stupid little Asian kid to, yo, he's part of the Illuminati here for NYC, <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I remember this so clearly. So, so like, so, so I remember I remember Justin from uh, MVC One Days. So, like, uh, so, so this is, like, 99 2000 right 
Mm-hmm. And he was just like that Chinese kid that could do Gambit in for it, right? But like, yeah, but, 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 you know, like you, you, you could beat him, right? Right. And then he was also really, he was also really good at third strike. Um, no, I remember at that time, like when he first started coming out of the scene, he was playing Marvel One at third striking tournament, and he was getting pretty far. Like he was getting like top four, top three, top mm-hmm. five, right? Pretty, pretty sick. Then uh, Marvel Two came out, or you know, like he just became unbeatable <laughs> for, 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 for a good four years. And, and then when did like when did Eddie kind of start taking notice? Because I remember when he first came out for like B five, you know, there was because obviously Eddie Lee came out for B four, and then Justin oh, yeah. came out for B five, and you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, and and then we were telling the West Coast people like I remember during B four when we were out there, yeah. we were telling the West Coast people and it, it, it's like we're, we're pretty good, but but Justin's like the best. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right and, and so when did when did Eddie kind of start recognizing Justin as like, you know what, this might be the prodigal son here. Like, I need to start training this guy. So, 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 so like, uh, so it, it was about it was about 2000 or so. And then, okay. and then I remember and then I remember like um, that, that was back when we were still talking on IRC of um, all games, <laughs> SF2, like MIGS, MVC, MVC message board. Right. Where mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We're, we're like, you know, you can see the video. So people would just pop shit at each other, right? And yeah. Then, uh-huh. what, 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 West Coast, West Coast wasn't believing about Justin, right? right. And and then I, I think the first time like um that that came to rest was um ECC six, ECC six was a tournament at Eight on the Break in Denali, New Jersey, um ran by Todd Dwyer, the homie. That right. so uh-huh. like so back in those days, like it's like you said, we we, we covered every game like CVS, Super Turbo, um Marvel, Marvel two third strike right and those are the mm-hmm. arcade days so four cabinets we so long story short <laughs> the grand finals of marvel 2 at ecc6 <laughs> was played at nine o'clock in the fucking morning yep nine o'clock in the fucking morning that's how long this shit took like on four right. cabinets right yep and the grand finals the grand finals was uh justin wong versus ricky ortiz right and i was right there and, and i was right there for that right and uh basically like it was pretty competitive but uh justin won right so then so, so then West Coast started saying that, like, you know, like, R- R- Ricky's not the best, right? right. What about, uh, what, what, what about Vian and shit, right? So, we right. were championships that same year, 2000. We all go, I think Justin, I think it's Justin and Vian in the finals, mm-hmm. something like that. Like, uh, I think I got third or fourth or something. Um, yeah, ju- and then, yeah, Justin blew up Vi again, well, right? I mean, and, even before that, even before that, I still remember being at Southern Hills Golf Land. Now, I, I have good memory, but it definitely gets messed up a lot. But I still remember there was a Southern Hills Golf Land where Ricky visited from the East Coast and beat Vi in grand finals with the runaway storm. And like we were all confident because at that point in time, which is probably weird to people in chat, Ricky was considered East Coast. Right, because that's where yeah, she because, was uh, at the time. Uh, no, no, yeah, yeah, Ricky was on East Coast for a good year too. So when she came and played MVC two at Southern Hills Golfland, we were all like, "Oh, we'll beat him up anyway." Vi is, I mean, this sounds weird too, but Vi was the best at MVC two at the time. A lot of people probably didn't yeah. know he was one of the best at one point yeah. in time. But yeah, Ricky won, and yeah, that Ricky. was the first time a lot of the West Coast people felt Ricky's, that sting of like actually yeah. losing to the East Coast. You know? Yeah, Ricky was like Ricky, like she was like that's like trial by fire right there. So so Ricky. She's the person that will be going up to Chinatown Fair in December, bit, like buck cold, right? And like she'll be coming up in sandals and like still body you. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, in that's New, that, in December that, in New how, York, that's good, okay. That's how good Ricky was. So Ricky uh, was so good. Ricky was so good that I got bodied so hard that I sat there for a whole weekend. And learn crouch can I'm, I'm sorry, not crouch cancel, roll cancel at CVS too. Oh. Just because I was so tired of fucking losing that shit. Like I sat there for like 48 <laughs> hours until I got it down. <laughs> Dude, so some people She's are like, asking <laughs> when did Doc Duck Doe come into play? So I can oh, yeah, actually I say this: that. Duck Doe, I played him in hyper fighting. Uh, one of my friends had a hyper fighting machine, arcade machine in his house. And he would uh, invite a lot of people over a lot of times. And Duck Doe was one of them. And he was like 12 years old. He was 13 years old. And he was just sitting there playing hyper fighting with the rest of us. He was all right. Like I would beat him most of the time in hyper fighting. And then when I went to an E3, Duck Doe was sitting there playing. I was like, oh, Duck, I haven't seen you in forever. And he's playing MVC2 on the E3 machine. And I'm like, you know what? I used to beat this guy up in hyper fighting. And I played him in MVC2 and he kicked my fucking ass. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I was like, what the hell? Is, why? When did this guy become so good, dude? And it's so funny because, like, he played at the Inland Center Mall in San Bernardino area at the Aladdin's Castle there. And me and my uh, ex at the time, we went to the arcade because my brother found out about the Akuma Code. <laughs> that was when the Akuma Code first dropped. And I went to the Super Turbo Machine and I tried to do the Akuma Code. I messed up. And then my ex was like, let me try. And she actually fucking did it. She got Akuma and Duck was there and he was like, wait, what the fuck? How did you do that? Like, <laughs> I still I remember duck being there when i when i first did the akuma code dude it was actually kind of funny so duck's been in the scene forever as well <laughs> oh man yeah dude i'm still gonna get at because we talked about midwest championship justin biting by and then the final showdown was at b5 yeah justin duck. yep mm -hmm. finally finally justin versus that duck was that was that, that was also the tournament where, where Liquid Metal showed everybody the ROM Infinite. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. I remember that specifically. Mm -hmm. I, I, like, I remember the whole USA Mama 2 crowd was like, wow. So, yeah. So, uh, again, history for people, if they don't know, uh, MVC 2 was always America's game. Nobody in Japan was competitive. Like, nobody in Japan was competitive. They had the, they, 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 they had the tech, though. Like I said, like, the, the ROM, like, that's straight yeah. Japan. Yeah. And, and <laughs> that was uh, Liquid Metal was a combo video maker in Japan who was obsessed with MVC2. And he came out for B5 and it was a really freaking big deal that he came out for that. So he came out, yeah, I think Chiki. Yeah, like uh, Japan coming out for Marvel? That's unheard of. Yeah. And, and yeah. And so a lot of people were like, oh my God. See, again, we had no idea. We we're like, how good is he? Is he going to be able to buy? He had all the tech, but you know, the, the mindset of the, the U.S. strategy in MVC2 was just too beyond what the what the Japanese players were doing. The tech didn't help them in that game. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because it's about the team composition in that game. Mm -hmm. not, so, mm -hmm. not, not so much the individual tech, although, you know, it helped. Yeah, and, and you know, they Japan wasn't used to blowing meter just for chip damage and, you know, for, for getting advantageous situations and stuff like that. It was just such a different mindset, and f I don't know what it is, but it just worked for the U.S. mindset a lot. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not, I mean, Marvel 2 is straight hood status game, man. It's like, you know, you go to your bodegas, you go to your laundry mats, right? Like, you're, you're in the hood, right? You go to the grocery store, like you see Marvel Two, right? Like you know, you just crack out, push some buttons. Dude. There might be like some gangsters to the left of you, some gangsters to the right of you, but it's all good. You know, like <laughs> that, 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 that's why, like you can't you can't replicate that in Japan. Japan is yeah. too clean. J yeah. Japan is too clean. You can't replicate that. It's a culture <laughs> difference. I mean, dude, t like you probably agree with this, but our current timeline. Obviously, we're in the golden age of the FTC because everything is just so much better. We have good oh, yeah, things. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, have... like, yeah, yeah. I'm just chilling. Like, you, you know, like, you know, it's actually to the point, like, it's so much of a golden era that, like, it, it's starting to be to the point where playing online is more optimal than playing online. Yeah, exactly. And, like, that's crazy. That, 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 that's crazy. That's crazy, and, guys. And, and we have, like, 10 legit games that are fun and balanced. You know, because like, yeah, obviously did. games were not balanced back then. But, like, the craziest thing about... Oh, where was I going with this? <laughs> oh, yeah. We're in the golden age of the fighting game community. But, like, honestly, the one thing we're missing in this scene right now is an MVC game, a versus game as one of the... the pre, 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 you know, as one of the premier games. Because Marvel yeah, 3, well, Marvel 2... I mean, when those games were the big games, I, like, the scene is a different... I wish, uh, 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 like, uh, um, I wish, like, whichever suit is holding Marvel 2 back from being at Evo, pl please sign the paper. <laughs> right. Seriously. Like, please, like, like, uh, like, come on already, right? I yeah. mean, uh, uh, I mean, like, and, and, and everybody knows, too, like, everybody knows that, like, when Marvel 2's on the stream, like, it's just a blow-up, like, period. Everybody like, watches, dude. Which, uh, which, which, which suit is holding it back and why? Because, like, cause I, I want to see it, like. Damn, like it's been so many conversations about MVC2 happening at Evo, and then yeah. people hit me up saying like, "Yo, Art, bring all your DC HDMIs," and I'm like, "Hell yes, I'm with it." And then like something happens. And then, I mean, uh, I still remember the story like when uh, you know, just kind of talking about the U.S. versus Japan mindset in those games. Like Seth would tell me a story that like during MVC3's development, 
they would discover like the most broken shit with Magneto and they'd be like, we should fix that, right? And Seth is like, no. <laughs> Keep it in. Keep it man. in. You know, like that's that, the man. point. <laughs> man, man, like I'm not, I love, I love Seth. P- people don't know about Seth Killian. Oh, dude. I, I, love, yeah. I love Seth. I can hear him talk for hours. Dude, Seth is one of those hours. people that I wish I could tell everything about, but he will write a book one day, I'm sure, and we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll hear all of his stories. <laughs> Uh, yeah but i mean honestly yeah so let's 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 talk about this because i mean you know uh we were talking about like tournament organization and stuff like that like people don't know how hard it is to do like tournament organization these days and like all the shit that can blow up and everything yeah It's it's so fucking hard like that's why, like, that, and that, and that's why, like, when I'm at Combo Breaker, for example, you, you know, g- great event, you know, like, uh, I know what I'm getting into, right? You know, you know, obviously, I'm a person <laughs> that plays on PC, right? You know, I play on PS4, mm-hmm. yeah, PS4, but you know, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna blow up the TO. Like, it's yeah, a great tournament, like, a great, great tournament, great experience, like, you know, and just to get all those moving parts running is ridiculous. And then w- when I saw Rick's bill for how much he said it took to put on Combo Breaker, <laughs> oh my god. Bro, Dude. like, re- respect your fucking TOs. I don't want to hear shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, one of the interesting things, too, I mean, t- speaking of, like, younger players, I mean, I was really impressed with this. You know, Umi Show, the, the Happy oh, yeah, Chaos yeah. player, who's been blowing everybody up online. I remember I mean, he won. Playing, I mean, the guy that was playing at the Match Arena Cup and won it before, right before Combo Breaker? Yeah, 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 yeah. We uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, remember, yeah. we were interviewing him after he won yeah. that, and he said, he's like, yeah, I've got to practice on PS4 now. Because I just have to see, you know, I, I have to know what combos are too hard to do on PS4. So I know what to go for and, and assess my risk oh. reward and stuff. Dude, it was like, I was so impressed with that mindset that he had. It wasn't like, man, PC, why are you guys playing on the like, shitty PS4? Like he, he, plays he appro- on PC. yeah, he and it. he approached it such a smart way. And I was like, so impressed by that mindset that he had. I mean, like, I, I, I mean, that's also like a testament to um to Arc System work. So, Arc, so for those of you guys that don't know, like, uh, out of all the Unreal games right now, you know, somebody's talked about dropping the lag. Arc System works. Guilty Gear Strive, PS4, PS4 Pro, PS5 mode. No, PS4 mode on PS5. That's the only Unreal game with two frames of input delay at 60 hertz. <laughs> like, Jeez. I think that should be commend. That's actually commendable. Like that. That means. If you're playing on a on a one frame setup on PC, you can adapt to two frame PS4 Pro, which is what right. I fucking want. That's what I want. <laughs> right. And obviously yeah. right now it's too expensive for, you know, gaming gen to have like seven bazillion PS5s or so. Actually, they probably have that yeah. already, huh? Yeah, but, but but like that that's why the PS4, that's why the PS4 Pro is so good. Like mm. if they fix that Unreal Engine lag and make all the games two frame. Yeah. That would be so fun. Dude. But I mean, you know, you've obviously organized a lot of stuff. I mean, like the the, the spooky really? blow up and all that stuff like that. I don't want to get into the details of that. But, you know, a lot of that comes from the fact that it's fucking tiring doing that every goddamn week. Bro. <laughs> right? Bro. Like, like I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say like, you know, like FGC is mad spoiled. You guys don't know how good you have it. Like, guys, we were in a pandemic we're like you're getting thousands of dollars every fucking week. You're getting clout on your name every fucking week, right? Like we had it too good. We had it too good. <laughs> we had it too good. I mean that's why like that, that, that that's why East Coast was the best in Street Fighter for so long. Mm-hmm. Because, of NLBC. Because, because, of NLBC. because of NLBC. Because of NLBC. Because of NLBC. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. You know, because it was so competitive and everyone kept playing there. And you know, it, I think, it's yeah. It, I it's, think about it like this, like. I was running the stream and I was playing Idom and Grand Finals every week, every single week. <laughs> I'm like, yo, like, I'm like, yo, this, this guy's gonna win a world tournament. You guys don't know how good Idom is, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and traveling. Sure enough, dude. Sure enough. Yeah, now, sure Idom is basically like, you know, yeah. considered number one or number two in the game right now. So, you know, yeah, he's cl- sick. He's clearly sick. one but, of the best. And and we, that's we, a- yeah, oh, I know it's it's so good though, like. So like so so I don't skill levels to the point where like I play another Lara, I play another Poison. I'm like you're not fucking I don't like come on, get, 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 get out of here, right? <laughs> and like and, and, uh, and, and so far so far it's held up. You know I, I pretty much like beat like all all the Laras and uh all the Poisons. But like I'm I'm kind of desensitized. I'm very fortunate 
because I'm playing world class players every week. Right. So I'm, yeah. so desensitized to, to, I'm so desensitized to that high level of play. It's like I, I'm sure some people in the stream chat they look at these players like they're gods, right? Me, because I'm playing them every week. I'm like, no, like they're not gods. Like they're human, just like the rest of us. Like they can bleed too. They yeah. can get well, it too. I mean, that's the thing. That's the thing too, is because I mean, we come from that generation. Like this is the dangerous part of this. Like it's happened in the Smash community, right? And again, this is no slight on the Smash community. Uh, this is just the culture that they've bred, and that's fine. Uh, you know, there's I'm nothing wrong with it. Yeah. But yeah, the top player privilege, the top player you know, the gods kind of concept. And the thing about it is you're from the old school mentality where uh, nobody's a god. Nobody's yeah, a god. Yeah, put up that quarter. Right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. And, and, oh, dude, you say that. And, like, that's, like, my whole thing, right? Like, even if a, somebody came into Chinatown Fair and you didn't know who they were and they were a stranger and you didn't want them around and you don't – because that was the arcade culture. You never wanted strangers to win because your arcade is the best. Right. That's yep. uh, that's yep. the mentality. Yep. And so the coolest thing about the arcade culture is that even if you saw a stranger come in and you didn't like the, the, the look of his jib or whatever, you know, like if you didn't like him or whatever like that, if they put up a quarter, they played. Yeah, they played like pre pretty much straight up. And um, mm -hmm. I think we saw that arcade culture in a full effect at a jazzy circuit this weekend. Like uh, <laughs> we, we were in Dallas, Texas, but uh, it, it was kind of an all New York affair. Like yeah. you hear New York mm -hmm. popping off like left and right, like that. That's how good our scene is, James. Like, yeah. Like there, there's so much fire that people don't know about. Yo, like New York, Third Strike. Yo, dog. We have like five to six venues with Third Strike arcade PCBs. Dang. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's like it's like mini Japan. Up in bitch. Oh my it's god. Like, <laughs> It's crazy. And, yeah. And, and, you know, kind of veering off a little bit into just like the, 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 the old school passion, but like kind of circling back to a little bit like you've obviously organized a bunch of these tournaments and stuff. But, you know, from a technical aspect, too, I mean, just, you know, us trying to set up the stream, we're having audio issues and all this stuff. And, yeah. you know, the, the whole streaming is a blow up because you were one of the first people to uh, really start adopting the streaming and you were running into a lot of the technical problems a lot of other people and a lot of people just don't know how hard it is to stream an event like combo breaker and have it actually be pulled off dude <laughs> oh yeah it's a, no oh yeah it's od like the production value like everything behind the scenes is uh, ridiculous it gets even harder when it comes to arcade stuff because you're dealing with non-standard equipment mm -hmm. every time yeah like uh I mean, th thankfully on console, it's a little bit easier. Everything's standard, right. but uh, yeah. yeah, like b b basically respect all your streamers too. Like they put in like ridiculous amounts of hours to, to bring you the godlike shit for free at home. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Give, give give them give them your eight ninety five. Give them yourself. You know, <laughs> the give yourself, right? <laughs> <laughs> like um, they, de they definitely deserve it. Yeah, it, it's it's crazy how much work goes into all this, and you know, kind of going back to where you know started about you know growing the FTC. Like I've spent, I spent I spent twenty five k twenty five to thirty k on my own personal stream setup. Fuck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, sub to your boy. Jesus <laughs> why, do you think, why, do think, no, why do you think the shit looks so good, right? NYC oh, Furby sub to NYC. <laughs> yeah, we're not playing over here. Look, I mean, th th this is the thing, right? Like. Thinking back to ECC 6, ECC 5, or whatever, you know, like, for me, I never thought we would be at the point where we could be on an ESPN 2, you know, or or even at the Mandalay oh, yeah. Bay Arena. I mean, there's that, you know, when you watch the Bang the Machine trailers, there's a scene where Vi is like, look at these Japanese guys, they're playing in stadiums and shit, man. And, like, you look, see the look on their face, like, if only we could do that one of these days. Oh, like, yeah, uh, like, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yo, yo, like, that's the reason, you know, that's one of the reasons why I started streaming, because mm -hmm. because I, I, I was at SBO, Togeki. I actually qualified. Mm -hmm. So, like, so, mm -hmm. so I, I was on the big stage over there. My match is actually streamed live. And, like, you ever been to SBO or even watch? Go watch one of the old SBO DVDs. Like, go watch SBO 3, SBO 4. That <laughs> shit is fucking sick. That made me want to stream, bro. Oh, like, man. Now, I mean, like, how, like, did you think 
we could get to this point already. Like, I mean, honestly, I thought I would be old and dead by the time we got to this point. And, you know, we're, we were here in less than, you know, 10 years from when I even had that thought. Like, did you ever think we would get to this point? Obviously, we're still small. We're still trying to grow. But Like, uh, like um, I was just playing to play. I didn't even think about it. I didn't even consider that, to be honest. Oh, dang. Okay. Yeah, like, okay. I, I, I'm not, I, mean, I mean, like, you know, like some people try to be about the chips now, but we're, like we were just playing for the love. We didn't yeah. think about any of that shit. And it just kind of happened. Yeah, I mean, because for me, like I said, th that's been on my mind forever. Right. That's the reason why I wrote FAQs. It's the reason why I did articles on SRK and, you know, tutorial videos and stuff, because I was always thinking about trying to blow this shit up. But fuck, I never thought it would get to this kind yeah, of I, level. I, I, guys, guys, like I read James Chen's facts on brawl.mindlink.net. <laughs> oh, my God. You Mosaic, mean... I, I like Mosaic. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, you just I was, brought I was, up brawl.mindlink.net. Holy I was a shit. I was the eight year old. I wasn't. I was the eight year old using that Usenet, right? Like text based internet all day. And I'm like, yo, what's this? What's bro? Who's James Chen? Oh, it's pretty good, dude. Oh like, yeah. Do people don't know old, about bro? That dude. was like Game Facts <laughs> before Game Facts. Literally, it yeah, was. Yeah. I wrote a Sodom SF SF Alpha guide on there. I think. <laughs> yeah. That was like that, 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 that was like that was like in the early '90s when we had like 2400 bought modem. Fuck, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like dial up. I, I was reading all games SF2. Like that, that, oh, that was my fix. Yeah. That was my what, fix. What, like in all like 12. Did you post on all games SF2 a lot? Because yeah, I, mean, I, I was there I at one point in I time, but I kind of stopped I around like the Alpha 2 era. And well, I definitely actually, posted. I, I definitely posted okay. there. Okay. Yeah, dude. I mean, yeah. I mean, that was. That was, I mean, I still remember, like, to give you guys an idea of how disconnected we were, I thought I was hot shit in Alpha 1. Now, don't get me wrong, I was really good at Alpha 1 at the time. And <laughs> I was hard. like, you know, Birdie versus Guy was one of the worst matchups in the game, but I was always like, you know what, I think Birdie can fight Guy. Like, I can beat my guys, the, the guys that I play over here. That was just better than most of the people were. And like, on Ages of 2, it was like, dude, you don't understand, there's this Guy player over here, he's like the best, like, you'll never beat him. And I was like, I bet you I could beat him with Birdie. And he's like, no, nah, dude, you have to play this guy, his name is John Choi, he's really good. And I was like, nah, dude i think i could beat him dude <laughs> like like i didn't even know who john Choi was at that time for alpha one like I, I we didn't know and you know there were people i still remember on srk oh. i'd be talking on forums and people were like i'm better than Vaya and john Choi, yeah, and i was like yeah, you're thing. not and he's like what no, if i came and beat them and i was like well then good for you yeah. but it's not yeah, happening <laughs> yeah yeah you, know, like, you, you want to know a funny story like all right so ecc3 right like I'm so green to the scene, I didn't know who John Choi was. Right? And I played him in Marvel One at, mm -hmm. at ECC, at ECC three, and I and like I beat him. And I started popping the fuck off, and like I feel so embarrassed now. Now I think about it, cause I was like, <laughs> yo, like I didn't know, like I, I didn't know I was playing John Choi. It's not even his main game. Like why am I popping off, dude? At B three, so I mean my my <laughs> John Choi story, dude. I have a very similar John Choi story. Like at B three. You know, it was about Vi, John Choi, and Chris Finney. Do you remember Chris Finney? From oh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I remember. I remember. Yeah, he, he used so, to post on AGS of two. Yeah. yeah, so it was those yeah. three guys that were showing up that were supposedly, like, the best players there. During the course of the tournament, you know, John Choi, I mean, every people, I talk about the John Choi route all the time, going to loser's bracket and then the ground, winning the yeah. tournament. Uh, whenever, when, 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 whenever I do that, whenever I lose first round and win the tournament, I just, I just pull the John Choi. Yeah, a hundred percent. And yeah. and so John Choi never plays to that level of what He's John Choi is like capable. Of. You're right, He's exactly. Like and so during the course of that tournament, like someone asked me, he was like, so how does it look to you? How does like Vi and all these guys look? There was this one Asian dude from Canada that was looking really strong. I was like, he's looking really good. And Vi is looking really strong. I don't know though. John Choi looks kind of weak. And I turn around and he's like literally sitting there looking at me. <laughs> and I was like, uh, I mean, uh, that, but you know, I mean, what do you, how do you, f fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like he's flipping out. That was like my first interaction with John Choi, dude. And I, oh god, it was just, it had to work out funny. that way, dude. Oh god, oh, god. Yeah, funny. Uh, 
Yeah, no, uh, and then obviously John Choi got to grand finals with Vi, and we had the most epic Alpha Two ending ever. So you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, yep. uh, John, John John Choi is still still sick even to this day. You can find him on Fight K Two. Dude, remember, monster. remember in yeah. Street Fighter Four, he beat Daigo's evil Ryu with his regular Ryu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who, who you think? Who you think recorded that video, James? <laughs> <laughs> Get that CPM, Arturo. Yeah, yeah. Thankfully, uh, it, thankfully, your boy Young Art was on the scene. Otherwise, it would have been lost to history. Yep. Never been streamed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were definitely running around recording a lot. I remember those. You were running around Evo recording a lot of the hype matches that weren't on stream. I remember that. That was uh, yep. like almost all you at that time. So yep. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 whenever a top player says like, "Yo, I, I can't get content at a tournament," like, yeah, like, we <laughs> <laughs> some off stream matches. Right? You can either bitch about it or do it. Yeah, do That's it. the theme. That's the theme of this interview, dude. <laughs> yeah, those that bitch and those that do. Oh yeah, and Biscuit mentions in the chat, but obviously, gotta give a lot of shout outs to Preppy. You know what the craziest thing is, is that oh, Preppy Preppy's a man. Preppy's yeah. A man. So Zach D, if you guys don't know, Preppy, he used to record a lot of footage. He has basically one of the greatest archives of match he's footage. One of the, he, he, he's one of the guys that inspired me. Well, yeah, and 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 you and know he what? Hated the, YouTube. He hated YouTube. Yeah, he did. He, uh, YouTube yeah. sucked back then, dude. Like yeah, did, combo video makers fucking hated YouTube back then. Yeah, uh, it was all about combovideos.com, video mm -hmm. opera. Game and like, combo, direct connect. <laughs> and the craziest thing about it is, like, I have a, an external hard drive with so many old combo videos. Yo, and yo, so yo, many yo, like, I have my, I have, I have like 300 DVDs of combo Dude, videos. Dude, I, I need to up. Yeah, I need to get them all. Get it off. Get it off. If yeah, you, I need to upload all that shit to YouTube. I still have all the mini DVDs that I personally recorded from all the Evos. I've been talking to Esteban. Uh, about digitizing all of those as well. There's just yeah, do it. There's so Let's much stuff out there. Yeah, I mean, we talked about it at Combo Breaker this year. So obviously Esteban is tired and stuff, but we'll get into that at, at some wow. point. But we have there's so much history out there that I don't feel like a lot of people know about, dude. It's yeah, it's not, crazy. yeah, it's not because we, we don't talk about it that much. That's why, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, shout out to you for asking me to come on. I mean, I honestly, what. One of the hardest parts, too, is that all of our memories aren't perfect, right? Uh, uh, like, we get a lot of... I mean, I keep remembering things that didn't happen the way they did, you know? Like, I'm not even talking about FTC. Now. I'm just talking about other stuff, you know? Like, I remembered something... I remember watching Kobe's 81-point game in a certain year, and it had nothing to do with that year, you know? <laughs> I was like, shit, yeah. dude. <laughs> what, what, what is my brain thinking, you know? So, like... Dude, yeah, it's it's we're we're it's a big hole, and it's one of the reasons why I started hole. filming and taking pictures at Evo. I put yeah, it on myself yeah. to be the historian, to be the archivist. And yeah, that's why. Yeah, that's why I do like 4K 60 FPS capture because like 10 years from now, that's just gonna look fucking godlike. <laughs> Dude, even today, like you know that Stephen Hender shoot book that came out, the 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 it's like the Encyclopedia of Street Fighter uh, came out recently. There yeah. are some photos in there that are from my Flickr, you know, because nice. I was the Shit. only one taking pictures of Evos and Southern Hill Golfland when it closed and all these things like that. I was one of the only people. So, like, my name is in the credits of that because I'm one of the only people that has photos of those things, dude. So, it's... Oh, yeah, good shit. Yeah, it's it's crazy. There's just so much history out oh, there. That... Oh, no, 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 oh, yo, to, to KJohn86, like you said something really good in the chat. Uh -huh. Oh, man, the flashbacks when Japanese chairman sell DVD of their matches. <laughs> yeah. so, 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 funny story. So, so do you, you guys remember Eno, Inoue, the CVS2 player? Oh, yeah, yeah, Japanese yeah. Japanese yeah. CVS2 player. All right, so, so, so there was a time where like, he was living on the East Coast with us, and he was, I think he was traveling like, the whole nation, right? So, so that time he was staying with the... He was staying with me and Ricky, so like we, we were just grinding it out, like all three of us just cracking out matches, right? He, uh, now I remember he, he was getting around selling like um, a six CD set of like top level Japanese CBS2 <laughs> play, and I think it was like 30, 40 bucks. Uh -huh. And I saw the matches, and like this, like it just blew my fucking mind, dude. It was the sickest thing I ever seen. And I mean, then he had, and then he had the, the, the freaking CBS2 book, and I look at the book, oh. and I see Hitbox, Hurtbox. Frame data. Yeah. I'm like, no, there's no wonder. I'm like, no wonder you guys are so fucking good. This is not but fair. I mean, 
even back Give then, the data. <laughs> even back then though, the frame data wasn't even like that crazy, right? I mean, Cami, it, it, like Cami and CBSC, like that last day. Well, what I mean was like yeah. we didn't study frame data like that because all uh, frame data did was just confirm what we kind of already knew, right? That's true. Yeah, because a lot yeah, of the yeah, old, that's true, that's true. But a lot of the that's old true. games weren't re as reliant on frame data. Like no, I say not, that, like, yeah, and people yeah, don't true, believe true. me. They're like, that's "No, true. James, if frame data existed back then, no. it would have been." It's it's not like it's not no. as important for the older it's, games, honestly. It's really it's really not as important. Like it's only important when you're trying to do like impossible combos and stuff. But um, mm -hmm. but, but yeah, in terms of frame data, it's like. You don't need a frame data book to tell you Cammy's like close fears in CVS two is crazy plus <laughs> like double digit plus right, right. you can still have yeah. playing the game. <laughs> yep, exactly, exactly. Uh -huh. And I mean, dude, and you people are talking about the DVDs in there. I'm sure you've probably had some of the the uh, gamest tapes or the TZW yeah, combos I got them all. that were on I got VHS. All. I got them all, bro. They're yeah, all on all, VHS and third, gen third generation VHS. Yeah, where the tracking couldn't even get it so that you could see it clearly on the top. Like, dude, we were. Tr I still have some of those VHSs. I definitely have some of those old VHSs. I think I still have the X Men versus Street Fighter gamest. I got them from Derek Daniels. Like, he he actually sent me a bunch of them uh, when he was yeah, back yeah, in. Yeah, uh, yeah from, Derek from, Daniels sent everybody through IRC. He was sending all yeah. the games through IRC. <laughs> You pay him thirty bucks. And yep. He sends you the tips. Yep. Absolutely. There's another old school guy people don't know. You want to want to know why Man. God of War? You want to know why God of War One was so fun? It's because a bunch of fighting game players worked on it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What game? Do, what, 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 what game does shirts work on on combat? Uh, he start. He helped on uh the Mortal Kombat Shaolin monks game, and then I think he did help with uh some of the God of War games early on, didn't yeah. he? I think he did. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah like uh, I think he, I think he did. Shouts to shirts. So, like he, he always be um. He, every now and then he always appears in in my tweet threads. Yeah. Where I post a Dawson <laughs> clip like shirts yeah. just post, and he's like, holy shit, <laughs> right? Uh, I like what's man. up. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, I mean, honestly, like preservation of of fgc media is is hard it's, it's so important it's yeah, so important and it's we still gotta be able, we gotta keep working on that like i said i have all the shit and it's it's terrible like i need to digitize all this stuff and Let's like people set. don't realize how fortunate we are that we can digitize I'm, all this stuff and have it be, i mean I, I, I mean shit send it my way james like i, I gotta frame my steer i got an ossc i got composite capture like <laughs> dude i mean honestly <laughs> we'll talk to you about that because like i said i know best and i know chris seglia like both of those guys are super interested in, and obviously chris seglia used to work for what pac-12 broadcasting so he's they're busy happy. though yeah they, but they're it, busy it, it, they're, that's they're, the hard they're, part they're, they're, they're busy making the chips Yep. Your boy, your, your boy, young art is here on the retro all day. Like I'm staring at a CRT. <laughs> like yeah, I'm my camera on, but I'm staring at a CRT right in my face. Dude. And a high refresh monitor right dude, next to it. I mean, let's, dude, let's I, I, you, dude, there's, everybody knows on my stream right there is a CRT with an NES on top of it right now. Like there's literally yeah. a CRT on my but, streaming but, desk but, over but, here. But, but, but like, it, is it an RGB CRT? Is it composite? Is it component? Like, it's composite. It? Like this is an oh. old school composite, composite only CRT. <laughs> you gotta uh, yell at, yell at, that's it, James. You, you gotta come to New York, right? You, you gotta get converted by Cruise, right? And, and then like get get your eyes open, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, get remember uh, talking to uh, Beast, right? Beast is oh, uh, Beast. Oh yeah, that's, that's another Beast. Yeah, go he's on. the guy. He's the guy who got me to set up the OSCC for my Tetris the Grandmaster. The Yo, only he reason did, why. Thank God. So, yeah. so, so, so let me guess, he sent you the optimal timings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The he sent me timing. all the settings that I had to set on it. And if it wasn't for him, I would not have been able to ever stream Tetris the Grandmaster. And you oh, yeah, were the yeah. one who hooked me up to him, too. You were oh, the one yeah. who introduced so, me to Beast. So. so so, so, with those optimal timings, like with the OSSC, okay, so basically when we talk about optimal timings, basically, like uh, when you're capturing retro equipment, like on flat screens, it's like you can't be a plug-and-play fraud. Like now there's some plug-and-play <laughs> devices that are um, – that, that that are godlike, right? Like the CPS HDMI or the Retro Tank 5X. But the the OSSC, Open Source Camp Converter, it's also responsible for the CPS3 HDMI feed this weekend. That guy, Mark, and that guy Marcus is a god. That's the only device that um you can actually capture like every arcade board known to man, right? <laughs> but uh but but obviously all the arcade boards are all non-standard video, right? Dude. 
So like, so, so you have to use, you have to use like optimal timings and like all like these, um, you have to go into the sub menu of the OSSC and you just start fucking around with numbers like for Dude, optimal timings to, to get the picture looking just right. So basically we've all sat there for hours Dude, so that everybody so can benefit. <laughs> one of the things I remember you telling me, and I still don't know how you did this, but like you were setting up a KOF tournament and you were adjusting the OSCC settings to get the colors perfect. Like also, the- so, also that, that that actually wasn't me. So I'll tell you who's responsible for that. So like so 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 you know the homie Tech Monkey, right? Oh yeah 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 yeah. Uh-huh, yeah uh-huh. So, so Tech Monkey, bro, like this guy is the human fucking scope. Meaning he can look, he can go into the test menu and uh-huh. pull the RGB levels and then just calibrate based on his eyes. You know how ridiculous that is? What? You know he can sight read yes, colors. Yes. 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 That, that's why the fees look so fucking good because of guys like uh, Tech Monkey. Now, 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 remind you, this is before the CPS HDMI. Oh, this came is out. this is the so, same Chun Li ST player, Tech Monkey, yes, right? Yes, okay, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's got, this guy, this guy's we call him the Human Scope, right? Now, like I said, this is before <laughs> CP, this, this is before CPS HDMI, right? So, long story short, right? CPS HDMI is godlike because it has perfect color calibration, perfect everything. Digital to digital, flawless. Like you don't need a Tech Monkey, but before then, right? So, uh, so, so obviously we're capturing right over analog, and then what do we have for setups? We have like a versus city head to head. So that's two CRTs plus a JAMA distribution amp. So you're basically splitting the feed three times. So that means you need to color calibrate not only for the cabinets but for the stream too. That, I mean, that's the that's the amount of work we put in to yeah, make that I, shit look fire. Like, as somebody who's downloaded real yeah. media videos for MVC two my whole entire life. Like the first time I remember, I, I can't remember if you DM'd me or something, but you yeah. pointed me to one of your MVC two streams, and I remember turning it on and just looking at it, and I was like, "Like what the fuck? Like this is the cleanest stream I've ever seen for." Oh yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. MVC two, dude. Like yeah. I mean, so so like so so like so I met I met the other I met the two halves that that made that. I, I also mentioned um that I met Citrus, but the other guy behind it. His name is Chris Twenty Six Hundred. Um, Retro RGB was nice <laughs> enough to introduce me to him because he, he came to New York randomly. He's like from Germany or some shit, right? Oh jeez. And like basically, like he's a guy that's like ten years older than me, probably five years older than you. That came up like in the uh, Commodore Sixty Four era. I mean, and, he like, calls he's, himself Twenty Six Hundred. No, I'm sorry, Commodore Sixty Four. But yeah, yeah, um, mm-hmm. Yeah, but, but yeah, like he's one of those guys like in his fifties, like you know, like he's the type of guy that does like demo demo scene videos, stuff like that. Like uh, he, he he was just doing it because he wanted to see like the coolest shit possible. He wanted to push it to the limit. And it's so cool that I get to meet these guys in person because when I meet these guys that make these godlike products, they don't know the effect that they have. They don't know <laughs> how powerful they are. Like, you don't understand. Like I I had to sit there and show Dan and Chris like what I'm doing. And they're like, you're, you're actually doing this in tournaments? Holy fucking shit, right? I mean, who was the one get, told They me, all get blown away. Who was the one that you told me did the thing for, like, uh, CPS3 that, like, oh, didn't yeah. really... So, oh, yeah. So, so, so CPS3, so it's done by the same guy that made the OSSC, Mar- Marcus, right? Okay. Um. So, so, so basically, long story short, like, so I meet this guy again at another, at another Illuminati meetup, courtesy of um, Retro RGB. So we have me, NYCVF, right? Bob and the CPS3 designer there. And like we're telling him like about all the events that, that he does. And at that time when he made the CPS3 HDMI, uh-huh. he didn't think it would sell, dude. He didn't think it would sell because it's only for one fucking game. <laughs> he was he was like, there's no way. He's like, there's no way they're gonna buy thirst strike boards, right? Right. For this. Uh-huh. Like, I, I shouldn't even do it. And I'm like, no. I, I'm sitting there telling him no, thinking of Jazzy and all these future events. I'm like, no, Marcus, if you sell this, it's gonna sell like hotcakes. Matter of fact, like can I can I can I get product product feed can I get product advice actually make it better? And once I showed him like what I was doing already with this old hardware, he accepted my suggestions. We asked for two things on the CPS3 HDMI that, that actually saves the th- saves the scene. First thing we asked for was a 240, 240p video over uh, HDMI. The reason we asked for that is because if for some if, if for some reason like the fucking um if, if for some reason like uh, so, something's wrong with the analog capture. You can use HDMI to like VGA converter or whatever, mm. and play 240p video on a CRT or lagless. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Under yeah. The HDMI mm-hmm. port. The second thing we asked for, second thing we asked for was a 480p over um, HDMI. The reason we asked for that was is that we wanted to play, um, we wanted to play 
throw a strike on a VGA monitor just for, you know, just make it easier on everybody. So it's like, you know, obviously VGA monitor is one of the cheapest forms of CRTs that looks pretty fucking good, right? So the 480p mm -hmm. mode was super clutch. So Marks added both of those modes and he won up it, right? He, he actually, he, he added those modes and he added 1200p, 1200p video, right? To the CPS-3s. So that's already a 5x upscale over the original uh -huh. hardware. Then after that, he added 6x. So like that's why that's why I blow up the 1440p. Like he went above and beyond with that product. So, like I don't think people actually understand like how and, godlike this guy is. And then he ended up selling a bunch of them, right? <laughs> bro, like, uh, but, bro, like he, he's blessing. This is his side hobby. He's blessing us with his left nut. That's not even his main job, bro. Right. Like he's blessing us. And, like, and, and for people to understand this too, because this is something that a lot of people don't understand about this kind of scaling. There's a difference between scaling and what you call the pixel duplication, right? Yeah, yeah, so, well, yeah, 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 like yeah, line, yeah, yeah. Pixel duplication means no lag, like scaling. Right, and, and, like, and not only that, but lag. like scaling does like the Photoshop zoom thing. It tries to interpolate and smooth out things yep. and stuff like that. But the scaling, the upscaling that you, the, the pixel duplication is literally, it's not scaling. It's taking every line and duplicating it once duplicating or it. twice. or th So when you said five or six times, it's duplicating. So the pixels are still square no matter what. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why when you stream it, you, it the, like the pixel like you can count the pixels on fucking sentinel's head when you're watching your yeah, mvc2 much. streams dude yeah pretty much and then um and then what else i gotta say oh yeah and also the cps3 hdmi it has a 40 it has a 40 line buffer through the hdmi port this is for compatibility purposes with certain 1080p and um 1440 please flash screens 40 line buffer is not even 0 0.1 ms so again lagless over HDMI. <laughs> Dude, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, like this, this whole, and like I said, this is so important to me about like this kind of uh, game preservation and stuff. And I mean, you've probably seen all the stuff too, which, you know, is kind of like the weird downside of all this perfect line duplication is that a lot of these graphics were designed for CRTs with the scan lines. Like they actually look wrong on the clear monitor and so, look so, better so, so on the, the scan lines. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you're you're right about that. So mm -hmm. so apparently like uh apparently we, we won't get good fake scan lines until we reach 1000 hertz, right? Oh, the, really? the closest Yeah, I, I'm serious. I'm serious about that. Dude, like, you I, even I, can talk, talk about, about this? What the yeah. hell? <laughs> so like so the the device that gets the closest in terms of fake scan lines is actually the Retro Tink 5X Pro. Shout 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 to our boy Mike Chi, right? Like he That's actually so did a bang up job. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I got everything. I got everything covered, James. It's like people think people think like we boomer, but we actually put in the work, like on the new <laughs> shit. Nah, dude. like why is the oldest men in the room teaching people like what dude, it is? That's so <laughs> crazy, dude. I mean, again, you know, one like I said, one of the things I, I, when I started this, I don't think people know the kind of shit that you are doing for the fighting game community, and honestly, like the kind of work that we're putting into this and kind of going back to, to, to the original topic, like we're doing this because we love the hobby so goddamn much. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. I mean, like people don't understand, like, like, <laughs> like I'm not, again, I don't say this to garner sympathy. This is my choice. So I've dug my own grave, but like I went from a programming job and when I got let go, I was like, fuck it. I'm doing FGC, dude. Like, <laughs> because it, I've chosen, I've chosen the poverty life. My parents can't brag about me to their Chinese friends anymore, <laughs> except, Damn, you know, man. he's famous now. That's the only thing they can say, you know, because this is kind of the shit that I, I love to do, man. Like I, this is just my passion. And it's like, I could probably try to go back and get a programming job again, but it's just, this is what I want to do. This is, yeah, I love I, it. I, I, I live for this shit. I live for this shit. And, you know, being the old man, like, we both said it. Like, people, always, like, in interviews, they always ask me, what do you consider the golden age of the FGC? And I'm yeah. always like, right now. Like, 100% right now. There's nothing better than right the now. Code, yeah, the, 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 the net code is good. Like, the games are accessible, right? Like, high refresh is a thing so we can get CRT timings. Like, you know, all that. Yeah. Like, it, it's all here right now. 
all dead, dude. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> dude, it's so good now. And like you said before, and it's like, you know, we sound old when we say this. I mean, we might as well talk about going to the 7-Elevens uphill both ways in the snow. Oh, yeah. But like people really don't understand how how blessed it really is, you know, with guys yeah, like it's Knuckle Dude. Really like Knuckle Dude winning Capcom Cup and now basically can retire almost for the rest of his life, right? I mean, he yeah. bought a house or, like, a car for his pe- family or whatever. Like, gotcha yeah. used it to buy a house you for know, him and his wife. And, like, like you know, wh- wh- when I, when I, whenever I see, like, um you know, quote-unquote content creator players, like, you know, doing well on YouTube these days, uh-huh. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, that's right, motherfucker. Like, this is the ground that we fucking built. And, like, you get to take that. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> See, you know what? They all have to thank Eddie Lee because if it wasn't for Eddie Lee, yeah. there'd be no Arturo Sanchez. And then you know, <laughs> oh man. But yeah, I mean, honestly, like the, the reason why we do a lot of this, the reason why we keep growing. Yeah, I mean, there are times where I talk about like I got bl- I got blown the fuck up before Street Fighter Five came out when I said if Street Fighter dies, the FGC kind of dies with it. Oh, and it yeah, was like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, fuck you, James. They started calling you like Cap Cut, right? They, they, yeah, they started saying, damn, James, they a, se- a shill, a sellout. Dude, like, people don't understand. I understand, understand the point of view. I right, the point yeah. Of view. People don't understand what I meant at the time. It's just because, you know, Street Fighter was so, like, was so people, dominant. It was so dominant. They don't know the kind of cultural impact that it has. And again, yeah. I wasn't saying that as Capcom's the best. I was saying that as that sucks. FGC yeah. should be stronger than this. Like we need yeah. to do, we need to do better. And NA in FGC, the end, and AFGC was very Street Fighter centric. Yeah, but in the end, weirdly enough, Street Fighter Five having a terrible launch was really beneficial to the FGC because then it allowed Tekken to oh, blow yeah, the yeah. fuck up, Dragon Ball blew up, and Guilty Gear's blowing up now. So it actually worked yeah. out, which is really great. But again, Street Fighter Five still existed. And you know it was still kind of, sort of leading the way in 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 a, in a lot of the years. Thank and, God, you know, thank God, the Matsumoto son, and uh, you know, like the other <laughs> the, the director for for, yeah. for Nakayama for turning that shit around. Like, dude, thank God, hundred percent. The game's actually dude. the game's actually good now, people. Like, dude, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't blame you if you didn't um if you didn't stick around for for the first like three and a half years when it was yeah. crap, but uh. Now it's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, honestly, Street Fighter Five. I mean, you said it, it's a numbers game, right? The thing about it is, for a lot of us, see, that's one of the amazing things that you're so good at Five is because you've adapted to that, right? Because, like, you know, the, there's a different mindset between Street Fighter Five and all the old school games because we didn't have the ability to go to an internet or training mode. So these games were designed to be played by feel, not by numbers. And these days, we actually have the ability to study all that shit. And so, you know, I mean, I talk about this all the time, the heart, mind, the, the heart, mind, and body, you know, philosophy of fighting games. And, you know, you look at it, Justin had trouble with Street Fighter V until he found Manat, because then he could play Street Fighter V like an old school fighting game. And then what's really interesting is that Justin's a heart player like all day, right? Like he is 100% a heart player. And I've always said KOF 15 is a heart game and he fucking loves KOF 15 right now. And then Punk, Punk, who's a mind game player, like he plays Street Fighter V, he's really good at it. He doesn't really enjoy King of Fighters that much. I mean, he said yeah, on his Twitter, like, yeah. he's like, I'm not really into the game. It doesn't flow with me. Like, yeah. it's no like, that's why, like, I'm so surprised that you have been able to make that transition. You know, obviously, players have done it, like Daigo, obviously. Yeah. He started off weak in Street Fighter V as well, but he figured it out too. But yeah. Yeah, well, you, yeah, 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 well, you know, like, Young Art's always, always uh, innovating the game. So it should be no surprise <laughs> that, uh, adapting. It should be no dude. surprise that, uh, yeah, like I'm just the frame data, but actually one thing about frame data though, like if both sides know the frame data, it goes back to mind games. Yes, exactly. <laughs> every, ga- every game gets to that point, but it's it's the it's the barrier of entry in Street Fighter Five that's difficult because you kind of have to sit down and memorize everything. The example I always give is if you don't know Colleen's crouching medium kick is plus and Colleen's yeah. is minus, even yeah, though Colleen's tough. looks slow as fuck and Colleen's looks super fast, you know, yeah. like it's you, you're you're not gonna survive if you don't know 
Yeah, after exactly. Zangief fierce SPDs and dashes, he's plus two. What are Zangief's option? Another SPD, jab into strong SPD, but then he's minus two and he dashes forward, but he's too far away for a meaty fierce SPD. So yeah. you can, le- you know, like if you don't know it's all, all shit. that shit. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 it's all shit that, that you learn in, intuitively by playing though. So, so like, that's right. why I said, like, it's not that I've studied it so much. It's that I just been playing throughout all the six seasons. So it's like, mm-hmm. so it's like my, my knowledge checks are there. Yeah, and yeah. dude, that's why, like, for me, it's just been so impressive and for to see you succeed in this game. And and also, honestly, I had trouble with Street Fighter Five at first because I was playing Cami and I was trying to play her like Street Fighter Four, so I didn't understand the numbers and 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 how to play it that way. And it was only after I switched to Lucia because it forced me yeah. to 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 abandon my old school mindset and learn Street Fighter Five as its true form. And I honestly really started to enjoy it a lot yeah yeah you know? yeah, yeah like, like i said like once they uh once they made some changes to the game to the game's yeah. meta like when once we figured out like um how to drop the lag then it becomes like i realized once i did the whole that's why i got so good at street fighter 5 once i did the whole lag optimization tech mm-hmm. i really started enjoying the games like a hundred times more right <laughs> and like and, and i was like wow like my only because dulcim is cheap is, now <laughs> yeah well, well, well that's he's always been cheap <laughs> but my only beef with these games is that the games fucking lag, and like mm-hmm. and like I thought I thought it was me, but it wasn't. Right, right. Yeah, I, well, once the lag goes away, it's godlike. These games is godlike. Yeah, I'm I'm really curious how Street Fighter Six is going to play. I really am curious if if it's going to be very frame data heavy. And again, oh, yeah. if it is, nothing wrong with that. It's absolutely yeah, fine. That. And and especially with the experience that Matsumoto and Nakayama have now is that they'll they'll be able to make a good game out of it. But again, it's just a very different mindset because again, like I said back in the day, we didn't have training mode. My yeah. training mode was literally at my college, we had free play arcade times where you paid 6 bucks to go in and for 3 hours you played everything for free. And yeah, Saturday right. morning yeah, was one of the days and nobody was waking the fuck up to go play arcade at Saturday morning at 10 a.m. And so I would go there and I would have the Alpha 3 machine to myself. How did I write the yeah. Alpha 3 combo fact? That's you how I did there. it. I, yeah, yeah, you stayed there and like, you know, you just corded up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. And then, dude. Yeah. And, and then Street Fighter 6, is, it's, it's so different now. You know when she probably you, you know as soon as the game launches, everybody's gonna be watching those new Dallas lag reports. It's gonna be like the hot. Topic. I'm just I, I, I can't I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it. That's gonna be the hottest fucking topic when that shit dude, comes out. Yeah, dude, it's gonna be crazy because I mean like if Street Fighter Six comes out with good net code, good lobbies, good matchmaking, all the one player content and stuff, dude, it's gonna blow the fuck up. Like it is yo, gonna blow the fuck I, up, dude. Yeah, like yo, like I, I really, I really hope so. But like I said, you know, because it's crossplay, it's like you know they, they have to cater to the lowest common denominator, which means <laughs> PS4 slims and uh, PS4 chubbies. So uh, I'm, 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 I'm praying for the best here. I'm praying for the best. <laughs> oh man, <sighs> yeah. I honestly though, it's just like. Uh, Again, you know, talking about the, the the modern FGC versus past, it's so good now. Because all the games are good, right? Like, the reason why I play KOF yeah, and Guilty oh, yeah. Gear and Street Fighter and Soul Calibur and shit is because all the games are so good now. Like, all the yeah, games all we played back then, like, you remember CVS1 Nakaruru. That's always yeah. my example of, like, fucking busted-ass character, dude. Broke so. it. They have broken. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, but you know, honestly, like, yeah, current FGC is so good now. Like, I don't even, you know, we're not even saying like you don't know how good you have it because you you should suffer, you should suffer to know to appreciate. No, it's just literally, you guys just don't know how good you have it. It's wonderful now. Like uh, we so, are in. So, yeah, yeah, we are. We are in a golden era. So, so the, there's only one thing I don't like about this new era. Okay, well, one thing, and okay. like it's like Blow how long these our- games. How what what's up? I started saying blow them up, blow them up, dude. Blow oh them, oh, up. so like <laughs> these games take these games these games take too long to fucking load, James. Oh yeah. like okay okay. I, fair, like fair. I, I, I want it to be like arcade where you just press a button and go. No, like I'm, I'm, I'm waiting five ten minutes. Why why why? Come on, man. Super Nintendo plug in a cartridge. Yeah. Hit the switch. Ding. There it is. Yep. Yeah. 
Oh, man. No, that's true. It's true for sure. Yeah, I mean, honestly, social media does make the FGC kind of weird these days, but I it's mean, terrible. Like, t- t- Twitter's cancerous. And like, I'm, I regret every time I look at it and I see a hot tape <laughs> and I get sucked in. Fuck, yeah, man. man. It, it, Those... it, 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 it's like if all games, it's like if everybody had access to all games SF2 and they had a voice. Dude, right? Like, nobody I mean, had those, a voice back then. Those fucking boomers out there that talk about how yeah. if Street Fighter dies, the FGC dies with it, man. These yeah. fucking hot takes, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but what can we do? FGC lives on Twitter. It's weird. It's very, very yeah, weird. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, like, and 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 there's also, I mean, there's also a generational gap. You know, we we, we are starting to see like the new FGC these days, mm-hmm. All, over and over and over. Like, I see it on Twitter, I see it at real events, I saw it at Combo Breaker, I saw it at Jazzy Circuit like, with the whole shit show, yeah. like about undamn converters, right? And, yeah, I mean, the, the the interesting thing about it is like that that's the dangerous part for us, right? Because it's very easy for us to get stuck in the old school mindset where we're like, dude, we did it this way back then and it's better. Like, I'm always one of the proponents of side by side, right? And then a lot of the new school players and even, you know, players who never played on side by side because in Japan, they always played on head to head cabinets. You know, they don't like that because I like the, 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 the weird human interaction interplay of being able to see how frustrated your opponents are and, and, and things like that. Like, I I like that kind of tech, but you know, I remember, yeah, 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 I remember that five when um when it was head to head i remember apoc was playing boss and uh-huh. like apoc was playing on the american side and boss <laughs> on the japanese side but it's side by side so when he was doing the pump fake boss got tricked boss oh got tricked. right you know yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah because they're just not used to it and yeah. you know but again it's dangerous because as an old school person like myself like it's easy for me to be like no that's how it was that's how we should keep doing it and that's not true right like obviously I, I I think it's up to the event right so it's like tennis courts right you either play on grass clay or hard court right whatever whatever you know the, the setup does all of it's legitimate but at the same time there is stuff that I feel like we need to preserve right as much as all this new generation coming up for me the most important thing to preserve is the reason why it struck with me when you said it is the one quarter one play kind of thing you know I want to make sure that we're always have the tournaments where anybody can enter and I always want that to be like the main yeah. thing that first round you can fight Daigo because that just happens. Like that's super important to me. Yeah, honestly. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, this, this is why I've been pushing. This is why I've been pushing for the undamn tech at, at um at real cabinet mm-hmm, tournaments. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is why I've been posting the lag reports about um about super gun lag and stuff like that. Right, because like, I've seen actual numbers. I've seen your in, uh, I've seen your videos from like some of the New York arcades where they have. So if people don't know what you mean by the undamn controllers, it's you have a port that you can plug in any USB controller into. The arcade cabinet so correct, that way correct, correct. if you're a ja- like if you're a modern player who happens to be using a pc pad and learning third strike on fightcade and you're like i'm gonna go to the jazzy circuit and you can only play on the arcade you're fucked right <laughs> yeah like so so so, 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 so 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 just to be clear like you know jazzy is um jazzy is huge advocates of um of uh, undamned right mm-hmm. and, okay, like, uh, okay. We, we, we actually we actually did try to get it for uh Okay, for the final, okay. but uh, the venue said no. But, oh, but, okay, okay. So, 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 like, so, but, mind you, the reason why you don't see undamped everywhere on, on the cabinets is because it requires an expensive custom harness to actually <laughs> yep. install. So, like, you have, to, you have to drill a hole into the cabinet. Yep. Mm-hmm. You need, like, a, you need a custom harness to wire up all the buttons. That shit takes all day to actually wire up. Yeah. Right now, Psychic Drive, so Psychic Drive has a version of the undams that are actually jam a pass through. So what that means is no no harness, no cutting of no cutting of the cabinet. You just like you just dolly out a USB cable and go. Whoa. Which is what we want. Which is what we want. I want that shit. Fuck these fucking engineers, dude. They're the unsung. Yeah. There's some of the other. Uh, there's a lot of unsung heroes in the FGC. But these guys, oh, yeah. dude. These guys are unsung heroes, man. Seriously. Yep. That's and so the cool. and, and and the undamned decoders are uh, pulling at a thousand hertz. So you know that shit don't lag. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's what I have. I that's what I. But you were the one who told me to buy one for the uh, Tetris Grandmaster. So oh, yeah, you of know. course, Undam yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like mean, the, 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 the the only thing I will be the only way I will be against Undam is if they allowed macros. 
Because oh, then right, you get a hardware yeah, advantage. Yeah. You of get course, a hardware of course, advantage. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of yeah. course, of course. So, but yeah, I mean, dude, it's it's an interesting time, honestly, in the fighting game community. Because yeah, it's the golden age, but there's a lot of history that we're losing, and you know, there's a lot of you know mentality that we're trying to preserve a lot. You know, in the FGC, like the because you know you hear a lot of the esports people are like, you know, you guys just need to move to exhibitions because people just want to see the best players and. I, I understand. I get you that. Both. You, you, no, you, you could do both. Like right. there's room for both. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But in my opinion, the open tournaments are always going to be the most important because that's how people come up, right? That's where yeah. that's that's yeah. where people make their names from. James, and, uh, J James, it's okay. Top players are divas anyway. Don't, don't always cater <laughs> to them. Like don't, don't fucking cry, bro. Let's fucking let's fucking cry. Yo, yo, like yo, you know what top players yo. used to tell me? Yo, like you know what these quote unquote top players used to tell young art. Yo. He used to tell he used, he used to tell Young Art that the stream set up lag, no lag tester, no no data, no nothing, like just their feel, right? Like you're, you're a top player, bro. Of course. You gonna tell you gonna tell me that shit lags, and then <laughs> and then and, and then guess what? Cap, Capcom Capcom Cup Finals, right? Uh huh. Young Art optimizes the whole fucking shit, right? One forty four hertz, godlike, right? What happens? P Punk goes like that shit too fast, bro. <laughs> like, so you're gonna go from saying the shit is too slow. To not saying it's too fast, yo. Fuck these top players. <laughs> yo, yo, dude. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's funny. Ah, oh, jeez. I mean, it, it's. It, I mean, it, it's. It's really interesting because, like I said, I didn't think I would still be in the scene to, you know, be able to talk to these players when it got to this kind of level when people were winning prizes. And, you know, <laughs> it's great that it is. And and it's interesting because I feel like our roles as kind of like the veterans is, is a weird one. Like I said, there's this weird balance. We do have to strike between being willing to obviously go to the new shit and also trying to preserve some of the the, the, the the integrity of the scene and stuff. And it's it's really interesting because, I mean, it's funny. A lot of people obviously accuse me of going super esports because, you know, you're definitely, I mean, not, yeah, 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 doing, you're definitely not super esports. So, like, you're just trying to do what you can to keep food on the table, man. Like, people can't see <laughs> that. Like, I found that, yo. Yeah, honestly, that, like, that's my response to most people is eating is nice, <laughs> okay? Yeah, right? Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Shit! Oh, yeah. fuck. Oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you no, for wait, saying yeah, that. No, don't, worry, don't worry, like I know what it is, James. Like I, I keep, I keep it real over here. You're lucky. You, you guys are lucky. NYC VM is only in the chat and and not on the not on the show because like you blow up a lot of people. Oh man, that's fucking funny. God. Yeah. I mean, look, uh, again, I, I don't want, we can obviously talk forever and maybe we should probably, yeah. we should just do another one of these one day. Uh, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to keep you here all night. It's 1130 where you are. You just, I didn't know you were flying back today. I thought you flew back yesterday. Okay. But like <laughs> you, you literally, and I mean, as a person who travels a lot, I know that shit's tiring. So I know you're fucking exhausted right now. So it's all, no, 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 I like it. It's all good. Like I, I just did a 36 hour jazz circuit broadcast. Like it was nothing. Man. Fuck, dude. Yeah, and so, talking. I mean, honestly, thank you. Cause I didn't even realize when I scheduled this with you that it was going to be jazzy circuit weekend. I was just like, Oh, this is the first yeah. Tuesday that there's no Tuesday show. Hey, art, you want to do this? And you were like, yes. And yeah, then you yeah. fucking flew to jazzy circuit and then came home and unpacked and, Oh, and I, sent you like a, a, and I sent you a whole diatribe, I think, about Mr. or something. Yeah, uh -huh. and then we were just, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we definitely talked about a lot of that stuff, but you, like I said, yeah. I, I, I feel like we talked about a lot of good stuff, but I mean, I, I, like I said, I don't want to keep you here forever, and uh, and we'll just have good excuse to bring you on for future shows, too, just yeah, talk more back. stuff. But, I mean, is I, obviously, again, chat, please you know, thank you to Arturo for coming on and doing this for this first week. And also, you know, sub to art <laughs> at <Wow>. NYC Furby. <laughs> um, but is there anything else that you want to say, you know, just like before, before we call it for a stream? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, guys. Uh, put, put in the work, put in the work guys. Stop, stop bitching on Twitter. New York is the fucking best at, at everything all day, every day. You know how we roll. Like, the, the results speak for themselves, right? Like, who, who, who runs retro? Who runs modern? Like, we run this shit. Anyway, th thank you, James. <laughs> you know, back in the day, I would have fought you, but I can't do it anymore, dude. Because you know what? New York runs fucking everything right now. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> 
Oh my God. But no, honestly, thank you again, Art, for coming on. I uh, hope people at home enjoyed this. I'll probably try to do some more of these, you know, one on one V ones with uh, some old school players and just talk about shit all day. But yeah, again, it was fun. It was fun. Like I laughed on time. Sorry I was so late, but yeah. Oh, don't even sweat it. Like I said, I didn't know you were flying back. And as soon as I found out, I was like, shit, I felt so bad. So. <laughs> I, had to plug it, I, I, I had to plug in all my shit again, and that shit wasn't yeah. working. Like, <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> oh, but no, honestly, thank you for. Uh, yeah, look at this. My cats are hungry. If you can see the stream, my yeah. cats are hungry. Uh, they want to eat right now. So, uh, uh, but yeah, no, awesome. And again, you know, this is this is we need to talk more about this old school stuff. And, you know, every time we see each other at events, we just end up talking for a really long time and, you know, when we can. So it, it was, it was, yeah. it was a lot of fun also, even at combo. Cause like I played you in like three different, like two different games. And it's like some of the first times I've played yeah. like offline in a bro, while. So bro, 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 <laughs> like, bro, like I, I had a hit list. I had a hit list of people. Like I said, <laughs> I went to combo breaker with, with one strategy in mind. And that was to open people's eyes, wake them the fuck up uh, i'll bring the setup there right and, and then i literally had like specific players from specific scenes in mind like i had top players in the list i had you in the list certain commentators like you know influential people wait, wait, right? wait, wait, like, what you didn't have to separate me from the list of top players okay right so okay. you know well <laughs> you're Illuminati. you're Illuminati anyway but, but but yeah basically basically like anybody who was somebody in the fgc i, I made sure they played on that set <laughs> I made sure they played on that setup. I made sure top <laughs> players played it. I made sure James Chen played it. Yeah, thanks, Art. No, yeah, yeah, no I, yeah, totally like, I totally get it. I totally get it. Yeah, because like, I was tired of arguing with people on Twitter. I'm like, oh, well, I'm just going to bring it to you. Like, yeah. I'm talking, right? Oh, awesome. and, and, then, and then, of course, like when they when they all went back there and they saw the setup, right, and they played mm -hmm. it, like there was no discussion anymore. No discussion. Right. Everybody understood what it was. And then, they, and then they go out to the PS4 station, 60 hertz, and they're like, oh, like, I, I see what you're talking about. All right, right. now I see. Now see, that's I see. what you should have like, did. Yeah. You should have had both of them set up next to each other. That's oh, nah, what nah, you nah. I didn't want to blow uh, nah, nah, like, I, I don't want to blow up the venue like that. Like, uh, okay, I just wanted to be, I just wanted to be. I just wanted to be like a back area where, like, you know, it was all cut off, you know, from the, uh, <laughs> from the rest of the venue. Oh, man. Because, uh, because like I wanted a private area where like the top players mm -hmm, can sit down mm -hmm. and actually yeah, yeah. see what it is. For sure. So, for so, sure. So, 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 so the interesting thing is, out of all the games, Tekken was the one that that people got blown away by the well, most. I mean, fucking three hundred and ninety hertz, dude. That thing doesn't have a yeah. hertz cap, right? So, yo, dude. I, yo, Super Akuma was playing on it. I think Super Akuma was playing on it. And he's like, bro, I fucking see all the frames. I see all the frames. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's just incredible, right? Anakin played on Anakin played on it. And he was like, "Wow, like that, that was a pretty good experience." Like, yeah, I, I can't <laughs> cut, cut, cut a was there. She was like, "This looks so fucking beautiful." Like, holy shit! Dang, dude. I see I mean, it. Honestly, like it, it was crazy looking. Like it looked, like it was so smooth that when I stopped playing it and started walking out of that area and back into real world the real yeah. world felt laggy <laughs> it, uh, yeah yeah it, it, it really is. see now, now you now you understand what i'm talking about real life is laggy for me James. it's laggy for me dude it really felt that way. <laughs> it, it really was crazy is. dude yo, like, uh, yo, 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 actually i do wonder i do wonder how they pull off those um those high frame rate tricks in in, in, uh, in marvel and tekken i believe my, my theory right now is like i believe they interpolate and low res the uh, keyframes hmm. yeah to, 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 to make it to, to make it so that like you know obviously the keyframes are in low resolution so like it's right, not right, right, okay. dude, dude this is too much tech talk for me yeah. <laughs> all right all right okay, <laughs> all right no thank you again thank you and thank for you, you for you guys, guys watching uh i'm just doing content on tuesdays to keep make sure that this slot is still filled up if i ever get hosts for a different tuesday show i'll try to do that or if this is something that people enjoy i'll keep trying to do this as much as i can to bring on yeah, but, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah chat, one of the it shows yeah, like. yeah, and and like I said, I'll bring you back on again, Art, because like I said, we could talk for hours on this shit. So, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> hope you guys, uh, no, hope you guys enjoy my insight on things. Like I was a little yeah. bit loose, but you know, like whatever. No, uh, like, dude, I, I, I like. That's what I want. Talk. That that's yeah. what I want. I, I again, fucking keeping it real in the FGC. Yeah. Man. Like let's do it. So. <laughs> All right. So again, thank you guys for watching. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, bid Arturo a good night. 
and uh, we'll see you guys next Tuesday for whatever it is I decide to do. <laughs> All right, guys. Good night. Peace. Thank you, James.